All right, hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We are playing One Ring, second edition tonight. We are continuing our Waking of Angmar campaign. We're on episode 52. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we got our, our full party. We got the, the we introduced uh, Taraneth last time. And so we're all here. Uh, and we're about to get into a lot of trouble, I think. Uh, that's, my, that's, my, that's my suspicion, I think, as uh, the events of last week. We have, uh, we have some friends that are in trouble that need help, but we also have a kind of a small time tyrant uh, to sort of uh, meander and sort of figure out how to, to make it okay. Uh, but I will not go full time into, uh, into the summary yet. Let's introduce folks first and then we'll get going. So, uh, Floy, who are you playing? Yes, I'm Floy, the treasure hunting dwarf, our most strong, most heart, most wise, most valorous. Most humble. <laughs> Most humble. I was just going to say. I was hoping you it. said it. I know. I was going to say it too in case you didn't say it. I like this new Floyd. So confident. Yeah. Excellent. And he's, you're not even cursed this time. So I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, for a very long time, Floyd was actually cursed and it was really yes. going down a dark path. Yeah. Yeah. It was very exciting. Uh, Gilly, you're next up. Ashley, tell us about Gilly. Uh, I'm playing Gilly Kettlegrass. She's our Brie Hobbit. Um, she is a bit of an entrepreneur. She likes to write books, uh, draw imagery for people that she may or may not sell one day. Um, and then she almost got jailed uh, with her panel at Rineal. So that was a, a scary experience, but I'm glad we made it there's out still, all right. There's still an opportunity. Just, Don't worry. Yeah, you're still yeah. Yeah, you're still there. Could still happen. And, Get your tattoo, little little teardrop, something. Oh god. <laughs> Could you picture Gilly with that? <laughs> going back to your going back to your parents back in Bree, like, hey mom, hey dad. I was hanging out in Tharpat. I got arrested. Uh, <laughs> Dad's like, they didn't find the sweet grass, did they? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Uh all right, bottom row, which is much longer than it used to be. Uh we've got we got a Rineal. Melissa, tell us about a Rineal. Uh, Arineal is our uh, champion ranger of the north. In cold weather, she wears snowshoes. In warm weather, she apparently goes to jail and then tries to uh, jailbreak some other folks. So we'll hope that the summer brings more successful ventures than last winter. Sure. I mean, we're at, we're we're nearing the end of summer uh, as uh, we're closing in on on autumn. It's been two years, like we we said last time, like. About two years since the start of the campaign. Uh, and so that's how long we've been with, uh, well, at least with Floyd, Gilly, and Arineal. Daggett, probably with the party for about a, almost a year, I would say. getting cl Closing in on a year, maybe three quarters of a year. Speaking of Daggett, uh, Stephen's let himself uh, grow his beard out a little bit further. So, Stephen, tell us about Daggett. Hey, I'm Daggett. I'm the most lovable, friendly, trustworthy dwarf you'll ever meet. I may not come from a rich dwarven clan, but I can still swing a hammer and put back the ale. Um, I am a captain as well, so that makes me the de facto leader of the group. It's interesting. It's interesting. No one else has a rank. So I guess by definition, your highest ranking officer. Is that what it is? I really am. Yeah. That's the book decided it, not me. You know, it is true. Uh, I mean, you did pick to be a captain. So yeah, but someone had to. It. I mean, that's true. I mean, we didn't actually play like something like 40 something episodes without anyone being a captain. So <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to double up on classes though. And I already did warden. So no one wants to be know, a messenger. I'd... Okay. I mean, well, blue yeah, collar, that didn't sound as good as captain. government, government job, post, po uh, post office worker. Come on now. Messengers get told what to do and captains tell people what to do. So, oh, so there's that little bit of tyrant in you. Got it. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that is one of my uh, shadow path flaws is that I'm tyrannical. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Mm -hmm. So as much as uh, Stephen, you enjoyed uh, being called Mr. Lawton, Mr. Stone in Blade Runner. I think now Arrhenia will just start calling you Sir Daggett and that'll just be what you just are. Yes, sir. Mr. Daggett, sir. Or just, wow. oh, captain, my captain. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Speaking and then you're modest. <laughs> yeah, right. he didn't say most humble, so I guess most he's not humble, lying. Right? Yet. As we all know, that's Floyd, <laughs> as he's draped in treasures <laughs> left and right. And then our newest member, we've got Taraneth. Uh, my turn. Tell us about Taraneth. 
Uh, Tareth is uh, a warden ranger from the north, and uh, Ares old drinking friend who she can only take in very small doses. So I'm excited to be around forever. (laughs) Well, it's been a year and a half. Yeah. It's been a year and a half since we hung out at Yule, so and in uh, like two hours, it's gonna be like four. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you, it's like when you haven't seen your old high school friends for a really long time, and you go back to hang out with them, and you're like, oh, this is really fun, and then you're like, oh my gosh, Kevin, like ten minutes yet? later, yeah, ten I'm years, s- ten minutes later, you're like, <laughs> you're still oh, doing geez. that? Oh goodness, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, okay. uh, so yeah, that's Tardis. Very excited. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's dive into the summary and then we can get started. So last time around, as has been alluded to, uh, Arineal and Gilly were arrested, so to speak, and taken to the court of Master Gurnow. We are in the city or the ruined city of Tharabet. There, that's where Arineal was struck with a, a, a wonderful surprise as she saw a friendly face amongst the court. She saw Shaltaraneth, a uh, dear friend. Uh, Taraneth was able to kind of get them off the hook by effectively vouching for Arineal and Gilly, meaning that Tara's kind of on the hook if anything else goes wrong while they're there and Gilly or Renil are responsible. Uh, but Master Granada, does, he did decide to re- release them. Uh, Daggett, uh, while this was happening, you uh, you were kind of waiting around outside and you heard a scream from the outer districts of the city. Uh, you kind of went and investigate and there you discovered these drag tracks uh, that were leading away from the city and a very frightened lamb that you s- summarily kicked in the butt. That's true. You actually did do that. Uh, so... As you were sort of following the tracks, you encountered this, this woman who was clad in very, uh, very heavy armor and uh, very peculiar accents. And the two of you ventured across what they call the Ram uh, to the furthest reaches of the city. Uh, and that's where you found a warg that was trying to drag a Tharbad citizen off away into the night. You immediately intervened and you dispatched the creature with one amazingly heroic, definitely only can be done by a captain uh, type of blow. Uh, and I'm glad you uh, noticed. Oh, totally. I was, I was really impressed. I almost stopped the stream because my heart was so aflutter. Uh, and, uh, afterwards, as you were looking, the woman was walking away and you saw her just like disappear before your eyes as she walked back, uh, possibly one of those, those ghosts or specters that you've heard about before. Uh, eventually you all reunited back at the bridge Inn. Tara was welcome to the party, shared some, some rumors and some knowledge about this huntsman person uh, or individual or something, uh, the wargs, that dark boat on the river, uh, on the Grey Flood. Uh, in the morning, you all took the ferry across that Grey Flood to the south bank of the city where you visited the Stone of the Two Kingdoms, because uh, that's where Master Gurnow's justice is sort of carried out, either through pillories or through uh, through the gallows. Uh, there you found Thorvum and Thebe. You eventually were able to talk to them. They told you a little bit of their side of the story. They did, in fact, try to escape the city, but for good reason, at least according to them, uh, because Master Gurnow, in their, in their view, overstepped the bounds of his contract. He basically confined them to the Middle Island, not letting them move around and only letting them leave if they were working specifically on the bridge. Uh, they had a couple ideas of trying to like trailblaze a way out and then maybe help the other crafters leave too, uh, but uh, they got caught. Uh, and so now they're here. But you did vow to help them and we're going to pick up basically five minutes after that, as you are still, we'll say, in the square near enough to the stone of the, the two kingdoms. You can see that tall pillar uh, that is essentially the uh, the landmark here. Uh, there are a handful of people milling about. No, Again, no one's mistreating the dwarves. There are some of the guards that are there, uh, enough to, uh, to send to see if anything happens. And I would say, Tara, you would also know that despite the relative... Um, in some cases they, they might come across as being uh, a little dumb or a little, uh, they are quite capable, actually. They are mm-hmm. very crafty and they wouldn't be in control if they weren't. So they, they might actually yeah. be a little bit more capable than they might come across at times. Sure. So I will, t- I will turn it over to you all. What do you want to do? Uh, so we're d- sorry, in a bit ahead. of a pr- predicament here. We want Thebe and Thorvum to join us, but they've signed their contracts away to help the king here repair a bridge. Don't know how we can get them out without this place going under even more runes. 
kind of wants all parties to benefit. Exactly what I was thinking, that we need to find something that they would want. There have been rumors of, and Daggett, you even saw these wargs and other rumors of, uh, Tara, you were talking about kind of this onslaught from the south. Perhaps we could offer our services in protection to clear out some of this and supersede the contract. Trade for trade. Still, still parts of the South City to explore if you wish, but I'm thinking we speak to this king again to make some sort of deal. I'm not fond of the idea of entering into negotiations with someone who treats someone else who he's contracted in this way. Who's to say that he wouldn't decide to change the terms of our deal as well? That is, I see the logic there. Whatever else Master Gurno isn't, isn't he is particular about at least coming across fair. If he is not actually fair. So that is a something to keep in mind. Well, we're just lucky he has you here to defend him, aren't we? So, and she smiles at it. Actions do tend to speak louder than words occasionally. Uh, we could deal with the wargs, and that would help the family that we promised we would deal with that issue. Uh, and that could help get rid of the... It could possibly lead to that ghost ship that people were complaining of. And that would be another issue resolved. And so Boy, then we the, don't even have uh, to bridge. enter a contract. We just do the work and then see if he'll trade afterward? I think so. I, I feel like the I feel like the important thing is to free our dwarven compatriots. And if the bridge doesn't get built, then so be it. It is it is it is a building. It doesn't require harm to dwarves to build. Yes, we can act harsh, but this city is still has innocent people and its merchants come by. It can be a thriving place. It's just plagued with complications. I agree, but I I also think we can we we must approach this one bite at a time. And I think the bite right now is to free the dwarves. At this rate, the dwar the bridge will never be built anyways. The dwarves are obviously unhappy. They won't continue the work under these conditions. So we could use that as leverage in our negotiation as well. He can see that he won't get anything out of their contract. Yes, and we have Tara here. I think she's concerned. watching over us anyways. I'm I'm concerned about telling Mastergarna that the doors may back out of the contract or or may not fulfill their portion of it. Uh, that I do not see as convincing him to. He is not benevolent in any way. He is, and uh, you can kind of see this look that passes across her face, um, and she sort of. Collects herself. Uh, uh, he he's pragmatic and a businessman. And what might work better for him is, as the Reniel said, trade for trade. Where if we are able to do good under his banner, he at least appears benevolent, and we are able to help the people here, and. And she looks at Daggett pointed. She's like, it matters not where the credit goes, as long as we help the people here. Would you not agree, Monster Dwarf? Of course, I agree that we should help them. I think you and I may differ in how we seek to accomplish that goal. 
Well, I think we might. And she's pausing it. So do we want to continue exploration here in the southern areas, gather more information, and perhaps head out to tackle some of these dangers? Sounds good. We'll do as we please under our favor. We can head there, Gilly. I know you're interested. Perfect. Okay. Uh, for <laughs> what I read on the map, this is the directions that I should be heading. Um, I can lead the way if you'd like to follow. Taraneth, if you know any shortcuts, please let me know. Just got like a tourist guide map with <laughs> yeah. all the first she building that. <laughs> she is exist. talking with Titus in a phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just love the how Gilly so just I just love how Gilly brightened up like library right we're going to the library <laughs> I'm really unsure I mean we'll have we'll figure out we need to plan how we're going to help them um obviously uh breaking them out is the last option that we have if we would like to remain peaceful within the city um Arenial and I really would rather not be arrested again and find ourselves in the pillory so, I cannot recommend enough being on Master Grano's good side. Yes. So I do city. think showing positive actions and assisting where we can is our best course of action. Under his banner. It is, he is not someone who values good for the sake of good. We can if we, sell our good to his I, banner if he I agree. concedes to our point. Of giving I us our door fully friends. Agree. Fully, fully agree. And if we are helped by the library or any other research you want to do ahead of time, then I absolutely we should do that first. Okay, so let me draw your attention to the map again. Uh, that is both on screen and, and all the players can see it as well. Uh, so the south side, the south bank of the city is in greater ruin than the north bank. Most of the population is in the north bank, but there's still some people that are scattered around the south as well. Uh, so you currently uh, are kind of to the northeast by that circular number 12. That's the the ring of the of, uh, of two kingdoms. Uh, you've passed when you kind of uh, get let off the ferry uh, that was more kind of south southwest along the coast. Uh, you passed by Ringle Tower, which is 10 right there. Uh, that is where, it's essentially where most of the, the the bandits, guards, guards, I should just say, not bandit guards, but guards ah. uh, are, are, are kind of hanging out. Uh, and then the roadhouse, uh, which is an inn, number 11, where I'm pinging, uh, that's another place where it's a little rowdier, uh, but people do stay there as well. Uh, it also tends to have a slightly larger, um, I would say, population of, uh, of these guards that might might come in and come out from time to time. Uh, and then right. the library is all the way off to the southeast. Uh, it's number 13 down there, which is near the causeway that heads uh, southeast out uh, out of the city uh, and effectively down this long road that eventually weaves its way to Gondor. Uh, so uh, what's the plan? Uh, Taranth will tell them about the Ringle Tower and the Roadhouse and very specifically recommend they do not go to the Roadhouse. <laughs> and uh, basically, it's a cop bar. <laughs> this is what he says to them. <laughs> and uh, if, if, we, if we want sustenance, if we want ale, I would either go back to Titus or find another place. We should not be seen lingering around the roadhouse even. Uh, we okay. can go to the library as originally planned. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with library. All right. So we'll say then you are headed, uh, kind of weaving back. Uh, you can see that much like the Northern districts as you're weaving through these, these ruined and overgrown streets, you can see that there's entire blocks that don't exist anymore. I would say Floy and Daggett, especially as dwarves, you can see the foundations of old buildings that are still in place, uh, but the walls have either been gone to ruin or they've been salvaged and repurposed in other ways. Uh, and in their place, you can see that there are 
Well, it's vegetation. And in some cases, you see groves, like fruit groves. Uh, Daggett, just like the north side where you were wandering around a bit. There's some apple trees and such around here. There's berry bushes. You can see there's people who are milling about, kind of picking some from time to time. Uh, you can see that there are a handful of intact buildings where folks are coming out of uh, as if they're maybe living there. But you would imagine, and Tarek would be able to confirm this, that those are people who have who are citizens of the city and not people who have just passing through. Uh, and so maybe a few of them will kind of, kind of wave, but not be too overly friendly. Uh, but you see people coming and going. Uh, you don't see a ton of, uh, of activity once you get away from the stone. Uh, you don't see a ton of like guard activity that seems to be localized around that site. Uh, but in the middle of the streets and the ruins and things like that, it doesn't really seem like they're paying too much attention. Eventually, however, uh, you do make it to the library on that far southeast side of the city. Um, now, the library itself is, um, well, I would say it is certainly the most prominent outer district landmark because uh, you are effectively on that sort of the outer cusp of the, uh, of the city itself. Not too far away, you can actually see the, the sort of the makeshift guard tower and the uh, and the and the causeway kind of leading away, but it is it is quite large. Uh, you can see it's two levels, still mostly standing. And Floyd and Daggett, especially the architecture of this place, much like all this others, is is quite significant. It's not in great condition. You can see on the outsides at least. Uh, but there's definitely signs of flooding. Uh, there's definitely signs of wear, growth, mildew growth here and there, and other grime that has kind of. Uh, covered some of what might have once been like this beautiful white stone. Uh, but when you, when you work your way inside and there's not like a large crowd or anything that are, that is, that is going here, uh, what you then see is inside is even in some ways more impressive, uh, as the ceilings are high and they're vaulted. There's all these tiny little nooks and niche and uh, niches like all over the place. Some of which has like this decorative carvings in the wall some of which you can tell that the architecture in itself was probably the art of it. But you can also tell that there are the, the flooding in here must have been significant and more than likely considering the emptiness of these shelves. Uh, most of those ones, very rare books and scrolls were probably uh, terribly ruined. Uh, there are still some uh, and there are maybe a handful of folks milling about here or there, uh, but you don't get more than maybe 10 feet into the place looking around before a, a woman uh, of, of an older age, uh, not so old as to be uh, like our good friend Marge, but uh, you can tell her hair has gone white and it's kind of tied tightly in a bun, but you can see it's fraying here and there. Uh, she has on very kind of conservative clothing, very brown, kind of buttoned all the way up to the neck. Uh, she's carrying this kind of large series of, uh, of parchments kind of like wrapped up in her, in her arm together. As she comes up to you, she says, yes, who are you? Why are you coming here? Can I do it for you? Uh, hi, um, my name is Gilly Kettlegrass, and I was hoping to peruse your selection and maybe uh, speak with you about some information I'm looking for. Peruse my collection? Well, young lady, uh, what is it you think I've collected here? And what on earth could you possibly want to find within it? Um, I am personally a scholar, so I love to read any and all information. Scholar, um, are you? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was looking specifically for um, the type of culture that would have weapons shaped like this. Um, I know they're more of a southern culture. And Gilly will get out her journal and show her. Um, those curved blades that we found um, next to the, I think, Morgul blade, the, she the looks, other type. She looks taken aback. How dare you bring weapons into my sanctuary? Oh, and she looks at the rest of you. Oh, all of you. This is a library, not a battlefield. How dare you? Are you here to, to rob me? Is that what it is? I can tell you there is nothing of value here. Oh, <laughs> no, ma'am. These, these, these are just, just drawings of something that we found. 
Yeah, she's staring at That's the weapons. We're staring around her. Yeah, that, that oh, okay. it's just weapons galore, like popping up <laughs> over shoulders here and there. A few daggers drops out of Floyd's pants. Um, <laughs> Uh, but she seems very put out by the fact that you have come in here fully adorned with weaponry and armor. Ah, uh, pardon us. We're used to this. Uh, we sort of carry these wherever we go. Uh, oh, oh, you know, I shall not be intimidated by your display, sir. This is my oh. my abode, my place of business, and you should respect that place uh, of, of business. Of course, we overlooked it. We didn't see any signage either. If you're more comfortable, we can step outside. Signage? More than half the people in the city are incapable of even reading. What good would signage do, young dwarf? Uh, well, the ma'am, sign ma'am, could is, just is be a... a picture with, like, a sword and a cross over it. Like, no swords. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks about that and like, oh, I think you... I think you may have something there. Hmm. You, you, uh, and she points back over to Gilly. You seem to have some skill with this uh, drawing artistry. I, I could make you a sign. I'll make you an offer. You draw a very, uh, a very clear sign that I might hang outside to uh, notify potential patrons not to bring weaponry inside the library, and I might let you look at a scroll or a parchment or two. Deal. Okay, uh, while well. she's doing that, is there a, a corner that we might leave our weapons while she's drawing, or <sighs> must we go outside? She looks around and she she sets her parchments uh, on a nearby countertop. You can hand them to me. I'll bring them into my my safe room and I'll bring them back to you when they're ready. Go ahead, hand them over. You can trust me. My name is Agna, by the way. Pleasure to meet you, Agna. I'm just imagining this like one of those scenes yeah. with in the movies. <laughs> it's just oh, like yes. just an unreasonable <laughs> amount of weapons yeah. from all oh, of these different oh, places. That's <laughs> much heavier than it looks. Oh goodness! Oh, very sharp. Uh, do you hand I'm them over? Not Good. so sure. I want to be parted with my axe. Oh, I'm heading if I my must, spear. I will wait outside. I'm not one for reading, anyways. <laughs> I'm okay with handing it over. Yeah, same. Okay. So she she takes takes your weapons, uh, and she she brings them into kind of a, a back room. You can see uh, no one else seems to go over there. And again, there's only like maybe three or four other people that are kind of milling about here or there. Uh, Gilly, make a craft roll uh, as you try to uh, develop this uh, this signage. I am going to use um, my. Paints. Uh, if I oh, still perfect! Have them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The ones right. from uh, uh, the ones from Forland. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gift. Uh, who knew? Who knew the gift from Lady Torlos would be used to make a, a sign? <laughs> <laughs> no weapons allowed. <laughs> That's probably exactly what she was wanting them to be used for. I got a great success. Okay. So. I will say a little time passes. Other, others can, the rest of you can do stuff uh, in that time. It's going to take a little, Gilly a little time. Were any of you looking to do anything in particular while Gilly was was crafting this? Are we allowed to look at things before she crafts it? You can look around, but she's not going to necessarily help you. And you do see her very carefully eyeing you the whole time. Y'all kind of peruse and just look at covers and stuff. Not really dig into them. <laughs> look at covers. I, I'm okay. trying to look for like maps or whatever. Sort of okay. similar to that. Uh, roll Can a lore I test. Look for something on the hunt on the huntsman. Okay. Uh, I would say roll a lore test uh, as well, Terranus. Yeah, I think that's both there's lore on both. Uh, Irenial, would you want to do anything? Uh, if I understood your description correctly, there are like carvings sort of in the architecture on the wall. Mm-hmm. So Indeed. that's what Irenial would want to be looking at. So she's, you know, kind of hands behind her back. She's not kind of going anywhere toward the books necessarily, but she's gotcha. looking at Okay. That. Hit a great uh, success. Okay. Uh, I'll say, Irenial, you also can make a lore test if you're trying to interpret any of, like, some of the stuff you're seeing. Uh, Floyd, you're looking for maps. Is that what you said? Yeah. 
Uh, I would say at a certain point you do find uh, a, a section of the library where there are a number of rolled up parchments that are tucked away on a very high shelf. Uh, however, there is a wooden ladder nearby uh, that you could potentially move to, uh, to, to gain access. You do notice, uh, as some of them are not necessarily wound particularly tightly, you do notice what looks like some artistry, some maps. Uh, you can definitely see the signs of topography uh, and, uh, and sort of borders and things like that that are indicative maybe of some maps you've seen before. Uh, do you want to get that, la that ladder? Yeah, I'm going to help myself out here. Okay. Get a ladder. You get three inches in the process of moving it before you hear Agna. How I beg your pardon, dwarf. What do you think you're doing? Well, the, the parchments are high up and using this ladder to get them. Let me see your hands. I'll show her my rugged hands. <laughs> These are filthy. Absolutely filthy. Look at them. When was the last time you washed them? Certainly not last night. I, I better go wash up. I don't want to know about your nightlife, Mr. Dwarf. There's a basin in the room that way. Wash them thoroughly. Thoroughly. I don't want to see a single spot on them when you return. And then, and only then, will I allow you to unfurl these most delicate maps, and only under my direct supervision. Is that understood? Uh, very clear, yes. Okay, off with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Taraneth, how did you do on yours? I just succeeded. 19 over 18. Okay. Uh, sure. So... You're looking specifically, so you're going through, this is probably going to take a while for you as yours is sure. more about opening up books, flipping through them a little bit, getting the stink eye from Agna, uh, sure. or maybe doing it when I'm, she's got her back turned. I'm wiping my hands <laughs> on my, on my doublet before, yeah. like when yeah. tears are yellow ploy. <laughs> Counter to most librarian behavior. She is not, she is not quiet when she says these things to you and it echoes throughout the, <laughs> these, these very high hall, uh, very high mm -hmm. ceilings. Um, just kind okay. of uselessly because their tunic is probably also kind of dirty. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I will say that you eventually come across a uh, what looks to be uh, kind of an older everything in here is old so that's sort of overstating it but when I say old I mean you're not even sure if this has been written within the last few hundred years. Uh, it could be much older than that. So delicate is it when you start to open it. Uh, but you do see it written uh, in, honestly, a, a fairly sloppy hand. Uh, you think it might be, you maybe it could have been age, someone's hand, or it could be haste. You're not sure. Uh, but I'll say that you spend a few hours, because that's probably how long this will take. And mm. you start reading about... Um, A warg master, you think, perhaps someone who it, it, there's there's very hushed terms, uh, as you can tell, that someone is, is sort of careful about the language that they're using. They don't want to name certain names, uh, but they reference how for for some time, uh, and it wasn't even here, but it kind of plagued the coast uh, many many years ago, and then you you can't even really get a date or anything on it. Uh, but there was someone who kind of plagued certain lands to the south. Uh, you think Gondor, uh, possibly, uh, where they had control of wargs. Like they raised wargs, they controlled them and were able to uh, sort of get them to do things on a whim in a way that most wargs are, well, they can be trained to a degree, but never to this degree. They were almost like domesticated dogs in some fashion, like, uh, like soldier-like. Uh, and the okay. figure that sort of trained them not only was, was very, very adept at wargs themselves, but was much more adept at all animals. And in fact, was also, they weren't sure if it was the same person or it was a different person, but could control things like hawks and like Crabane, like those birds from Dunlin. Uh, and they had the ability to kind of send them out and seek them out and swarm them. They would return to him and swarm around him almost like, like they just controlled it. Um, there's no, there's nothing in which you find to suggest that this figure was ever, ever killed. And in fact, there's actually kind of a haunting way in which this, this journal seems to end 
where it's referencing like a village outpost, they're surrounding us, and then there's never another entry. Uh, so that's probably what you'd be able to learn. Thank you. Sure. Uh, then, uh, Arenial, you were looking at the carvings, trying to glean something of interest from it. Uh, what do you got? Uh, so I rolled a Gandhi and a six. So that is a great success of uh, 20 okay. over 16. You actually see, and it's... And it's a little spotty because there have been some replacement stones here and there and others that have worn over time. But you almost track like a freeze in and, and through around a series of these nooks and crannies in the walls that seems to depict, and you and as, as a ranger, you would probably be most suited to, to sort of picking this out. It looks to be the kings of both the northern and the southern kingdom. So Arnor and Gondor, perhaps, Kind of coming together, you see what you probably would now recognize since you visited the, the, the stone of the two kingdoms. You almost seem like this sort of diplomatic relation between like these two that are kind of pieced together. You recognize barely the, the star that you've seen so many times now, that kind of five-pointed star here and there, uh, or seven-pointed star in other places. You see these different kind of places, these sort of different figures it's hard to piece together exactly who they are, but you recognize that looks that looks like the symbol of Arnor. That that you you you're pretty confident that might be Gondor. You maybe that's one of the successor kingdoms, and so like you know like a Cardolan or something like that. And so you just kind of track this narrative around that shows that almost seems to sort of narrate Tharbad as this as this meeting point, this sort of sort of diplomatic neutral ground uh, between these two kingdoms. And you probably spend a not insignificant amount of time moving around the library to do so. Okay. And then uh, we'll come back uh, to Gilly. Uh, Gilly, how'd you do on that craft test? Uh, I got the the great success. Great success. Okay. Yeah. So at a certain point after uh, she's helped Floy get down some maps after she has checked in with Taraneth, looked over her shoulder, making sure that Taraneth's hands are clean enough. She comes over to you and she, she looks and you hand, you kind of present this to her, this, uh, this, this sign. What does it look like to describe, describe what it looks like to us? So it's kind of like one of those like wall scrolls. So it just kind of furls out and then it, she designed this, it's a series of weapons and she has drawn just like the typical red aggressive, like no circle with like a line through it. Um, and it's just like, it's got an ax, a sword, um, just general sharp objects that they might have. And like, so that they don't get brought inside. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. She examines it. Wow. You seem to have some skill here with the, with the parchment and the paintbrush. Very, very nice. I might have chosen a slightly different color scheme, but this will do. This will do indeed. Um, yes, perhaps we can get your other dwarvish friend who is lingering on my doorstep to hang it for us. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. And she's kind of pointing at Daggett through this vaulted entry into the library. Uh, and so Gilly will head over to Daggett. Uh, could you help hang this up somewhere out here so that uh, people know no weapons? Uh, Daggett would have been out on the doorstep and he took his helmet off to use as a seat and he would have just been polishing Block Fong. And you come out there and he would just kind of look a little sad like, I'm a little busy. I suppose I could. Is there no one else? Uh, I guess. I guess I could try. And like, I no, like, no, no. I'll do it. You. I'll do it. <laughs> so she's just holding it up. <laughs> it's like not very far up on the wall at all. I'll do it, and I, I slowly uh, start putting uh, everything away: my oils and my uh, rags and everything. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it, and uh, I'll, I'll start hanging the sign. So while Daggett's doing that, Gilly, you return. And she says, well, yeah. deal is a deal. 
Now, you said you were a scholar, did you not, young lady? Yes, ma'am. Don't think I don't know what you are. You're hobbit folk. Most of the yes. most of the folks around here probably wouldn't know that word at all. They keep I know a bit a about child. you. Yes, well, sometimes let people think less of you and you can get away with more things. They look at me and they see an older woman, a librarian. But I'll tell you, I have wielded a blade. She pulls back like like a little bit on this coat she's mm-hmm. wearing. You can see a you can see a knife in there. Occasionally, yeah. some folks come in here thinking they're going to steal a thing or two, and they're going to sell it to some far off place. I've had to draw this more than once, and when I do, I can guarantee you, young lady, it has not gone back into my pocket without first having to be wiped clean from the blood of those hooligans. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Now, if you I'm say you that- are a scholar. She looks around very carefully. She mm-hmm. leans in and she whispers, I have perhaps not always been truthful about the entirety of what was recovered following the floods. And if you can prove to me that you are as worldly and intelligent as you claim to be, then perhaps... I will show you some very curious books. Oh, I, I would love that. And so then she starts, and I won't do this because I won't subject you to this, Ashley, but then okay. she starts <laughs> quizzing you. She throws out a place. She throws mm-hmm. out a person. She throws out uh, like a battle. She throws out this historical event. All these things rapid fire, one after the other, after the other. And she's expecting you to respond in some way, demonstrating your knowledge of that place. So what I'm going to make this, okay. yeah, well, I was going to make it a roll. So it's going to be a roll to see if you kind of okay. get access to her special vaults. Uh, it's going to be a lore test, which I know you're great at. However, okay. some of this stuff is possibly a little beyond Gilly's knowledge base, because some of it has okay. to deal with the Southern Kingdom of Gondor. Yeah. And so while you're, you're much more, you're much more uh, informed about you know, Arnor and the successor kingdoms, Gondor is probably still very new to you. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to make this ill-favored. Uh, we do still have, we still have audience dice and stuff if you wanted to, to use it, but you're welcome to. I would like to use the magical success by spending a hope of my Pearl of Calebrion. Okay. So nice. are we... Are we still saying that like it's on the chain around your neck? It's kind of hidden a little bit, or do you so produce this got, in some way? Yeah. So she's got like uh, she does have like a chain that she wears, but she has a stitched pocket in the inside of her shirt that it it hangs in. But obviously, you can kind of see that there's a bump there. Um, and so as she's thinking about things, she's like rubbing at this this item, um, kind of like gently like she's got like fabric on it so she's not treating it entirely like a worry stone kind of but like it definitely is like as she's thinking okay so she her eyes kind of peek up but she doesn't get nosy about it but at the same time um you can roll by the way to see if you get extra successes on top of it uh okay. and you still have the magical success so you're fine uh we'll have to teach my tree about magical successes there's certain certain times you can get them i don't think rangers get anything by default uh melissa can double check me on that but i know that elves and dwarves and then certain magical items that they have accrued over the time have allowed them to it's essentially get right nice yeah it'd be Ill- ill-favored yeah ill-favored okay so then thank god i had i spent the, the point because i didn't succeed okay you still got it and she's like oh well then and, it, and suddenly suddenly she smiles and she seems she seems actually quite excited oh well then what a wonderful day this has what a what a wonderful surprise and your name what was your name again young lady uh, my name is gilly kettlegrass miss kettlegrass it's a pleasure to meet you you, you may call me agna i am uh, oh and she looks around well come with me and she uh. She want she like wanders way into the recesses and you can you're going past like some heavily damaged areas like you can see flood damage, collapsed stone, no one's around here. At a certain point, you see she like looks around, she reaches into this little cabinet, she pulls out what looks like a lantern 
She lights it up and she kind of proceeds down this series of sort of stone steps that kind of seem hidden behind this rubble. She mm -hmm. comes up to this very heavy, heavy door and you think she's about to go to it, but instead she turns off to the side and she kind of looks back again. And then she just kind of reaches out, grabs this one piece of stone that seems to be protruding out from a wall a little bit further than the others and pulls over this hidden door. And you can smell kind of dust pop up. And yeah. you can see there's a small room inside as the lantern light kind of comes in. There's a desk. There's a series of books on the wall and shell. You know, there's some shelves with scrolls and other things here and there. Uh, and uh, she leads you back in. This is my private study. My oh, This is magnificent. Well, it is, um, it is, it is nice, I suppose. Now, I know you asked particularly about those weapons. Mm -hmm. I can tell you with great uncertainty that there are, I won't give you the full story, of course, that could take hours. However, there are, are people, not your people, perhaps um, your, well, I'll be honest, they have the look of rangers to them, the, the humans with you. Their ancestors, perhaps. Do you know where they came from? Oh, of course you do. I'm speaking to Miss Kettlegrass. Well, I can tell you that... The Numenorians is what they were called. Not all of them were as heroic and wonderful as, uh, as some of the stories suggest them to be. There were others. Others who went down a darker path. And some, much like your ranger friends, some still linger in some form till today. More often, they... Tend towards the, the coastlines, of course. They are a sea-bearing people. Further south, you might say. Not normally something we see here, but I have heard that swan fleeters... Oh, no, I beg your pardon. Londeers have, down to that ruinous place, occasionally seen them. Uh, they have been referred to, and I am not particularly keen on this term, but I will use it here nonetheless, as black Numenorians. Very... Very dangerous folk. Some say that they are, um, well, they are loosely tied with great evils. And she just like leaves and lets that like, kind of hang in the air. Yeah. Um, and no. then Gilly will offer up where we had encountered uh, the the weapons and such. Uh, it wasn't very coastal, but I suppose there was rivers nearby that they were able to access. She nods. I have heard some disturbing rumors of late. Rumors of sails on the river. I, I go to bed quite early, of course, so I can't say I've seen them myself, but I have heard more than one. I even had one of Master Kurnow's foolish sons come here looking for reshirts on behalf of his father to try to suss out what ever has been plaguing, apparently, the northern farmers. But sadly, they were unable to find anything because I do not have much to offer. That's not why I brought you back here, Miss Kettlegrass. No. Oh. I brought you back here for a different reason. Your dwarfish friend, the one who hanged our beautiful new anti-weapon policy poster. Yes. The weapon that he was sharpening, polishing, that he seemed so keen on keeping close. I've seen a drawing of it before. Have you? What, what do you know of this weapon? Well, I must return to the floor before your... your dwarvish friend, the one on the inside, ruins all of my maps. So... Agna, I'm back. My, I washed my beard in there, too. Get not supposed to be back here. Out with you. <laughs> that was me returning to the top floor and not seeing her there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you look around. I thought He's you suddenly appeared. washing his hands no. this whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Instead, what I'll give you is where I saw the picture drawn. Very old book. Be very careful. And she takes down this heavy tome. She sets it down and she opens it up to the page. And then you can see that in addition to this drawing of what Daggett refers to as Black Funk, which is not Black Fong. I don't know why Steven trolls me like that all the time. Uh, but it's Black Fang. You see there's yeah. 
text in other weaponry and other things as well. So you could spend some time studying this if you would like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so she leaves you. She returns. Floy, she's going to come to you. You are looking for maps. You've washed your hands. She it will now turn to allow you to help you know, allow you to use the library. You wander around, etc. You get some stuff down. What are you looking for in terms of these maps? Is there something in particular you're you're staring for? Uh, either if they're they're really old, maybe they're newer, or how this place used to be before it was destroyed. Maybe some routes outside of the city. Okay. Oh, like changes, like possible. Sure. I'll say that's very, I think with your success, I think you had a great success, right? I think yeah. that was right. Uh, you very much find uh, a map, uh, at least a, like a layout, an artistically drawn as opposed to like a, like an engineering schematic. So it's a little bit more artistic, but it's, it's, it's nonetheless a, f- a fairly accurate depiction. And you can see all of those places that you've passed by that are ruins, that vegetation and apple groves are growing up in or sheep are grazing or whatever there are the buildings that were once there. It's a very old, old scroll, but it's nonetheless one that you're, you're capable of unfurling. Uh, she'll tell you, she'll kind of like tell you some stories about this here and there, and she'll kind of point out certain sections that were destroyed by the flood. She'll even kind of get very morose at that point as she starts talking about so much loss of life. It was quite tragic. And then she'll also kind of pull out some other maps of the countryside. And you can see that there are sections where like, Smaller hamlets and villages had formed here and there. And then she'll kind of point, unfortunately, that one, well, this one, famine, this one, flood, orcs, Dunlingdons, um, this one, they just abandoned it from drought. And, and she kind of just goes around and all these little kind of satellite hamlets and villages that had once been popping up to the south side of the Grey Flood and to the north side, they're all kind of gone a few of them, there's still ruins here or there. Uh, some more recent than others. Uh, folks say that uh, you know, those who don't want to stay within Tharbad, sometimes they use the ruins of these places as shelter. Other times, about two years ago, I suspect it was, they had a very significant orc problem. I've heard rumors that we might be having one again, but about two years ago, there's a very, very powerful orc, apparently, that uh, had been growing a very large army. And they used many of these old villages as hideouts here and there, and they would assault anyone who would uh, who would seek shelter for the night there. So they would wait in these tiny little holes. They dug beneath the foundations of some of the, some of the homes, and then when unknown travelers who were just looking to camp out for the evening fell asleep that night, well, the orcs would descend upon them, and by descend, I mean they would unearth themselves from below, and, well, well, Thurnau and his brother Murdoch, they were, were bringing several bodies back each day, back then. But fortunately, fortunately, the army left. Things have been better, but recently there have been more. I've also heard, this is quite peculiar, and she starts pointing along. As you can see here, this road travels all the way down to Gondor. Uh, also, you could go off in this direction more northernly to the Tower of Isengard. Said a very powerful wizard named Sauruman has been living there, well, as far as anyone here knows. Mm. However, this area, she kind of points again, Dunlins. There's um, a human people. Now, most of the time, we here in Tharbad haven't had to encounter them much. They stay further south, and it's more of a more of Gondor and Rohan who have to deal with them than us. But recently, Murdoch, one of the sons of Master Gernal, has, has said that they are increasing in activity. We have seen Many merchants kind of come up the road here and be, a, be accosted. Uh, not killed, thankfully, which is honestly the only difference between the orcs and the Dunlingdings at this point is some, uh, the lives are kept, but the wealth is gone. So, there you have it, my young dwarf. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, I'm a bit curious. I'll sort of trace the map towards the north where we entered, or we tried to enter. We Where we landed, uh, 
I forget his name, but that that weird guy was talking about the Huntsman in that tower, sort of in that location. Gerwin. Um, oh, well, there was time. Most certainly, and this was long ago, successor kingdoms. The Cardolin, one of them, uh, built a handful of watchtowers along the road uh, at the time. However, um, famine, or not famine, I should say, plague, and uh, other dangers. When the war with Angmar came rushing through the northern kingdoms, has left, uh, well, many of the princes of Cardolin died out in this way or that, buried in the downs here, and she kind of points to the map. And as far as I know, no one has really maintained the road, let alone the watchtowers along the way. There were some very close to Tharbad, in fact, that um, I suppose when I was a young teenager, uh, they harvested for its entire stone, took it all the way down to the nub, and brought all the stone back here to repair. Um, Most likely that's what, what it was. Ah, uh, thank you. It's, it's a good map. You cannot keep it, if that's what you're asking. Of course not. I'll have Gilly retrace some of this. Trace? No. No, 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 no. The chances of ink bleeding through the page in the parchment onto this map are far too too high. And as much as I love Miss Kettlegrass, and you would be right to call her Miss Kettlegrass, she deserves your respect, young man. I will not allow her to do it. If, however, she wants to produce her own copy by looking at it, then I will, of course, allow her to do that. But she is busy with far more important matters. You say so. So we'll cut over to Taraneth and Daggett and Arineal. What have the three of you been doing these hours as you've been researching in this library? What have you been wanting to do? Anything. You guys go first. I I, uh, I have been compiling my my huntsman notes and every and everything else. So you guys I would go say first. probably after Arineal looked at the um, kind of the architecture and you know kind of kind of got that that whole story. Uh, Arineal would probably actually go over to Terra, um, and just kind of you know kind of poke her head up over your shoulder and just say, "Ah, uh, good, good reading there." Yes, it. Uh, I think it's a it's a journal, not a like a not not like a formal book. It looks like. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. Well, it's journals journal, are much journal, more interesting. It, like yes, the the journal this, that Gilly's writing, I trust that so much more than a book that someone decided that that was their truth. In that case, you might find this one particularly interesting. And uh, Tara will show Ari some salient bits about uh, what has just been found. Specifically about uh, raising and controlling war, war is in almost a soldierly way rather than just general domesticated animals and also person being really good at controlling animals. Um, and Jeff, I, I need to ask a, a meta question about the sure. world at this point. Um, yeah. Our ranger ancestors, um, are, are, as a people, are rangers known for being particularly good with animals? Like, is that uh, like a not thing? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily, no. Um, okay. I, no. I guess what I'm getting at is if I, I came across that description, would something kind of ping as like okay that's reminding me of something and uh, um, how did you do how'd you do on your lower test again what did you was it a not 19 test? over 18 just okay. just just a hair uh <laughs> i i would say if you just in that no but i will let a renewal roll one now if she's gonna consult with you uh and you two are yeah. gonna kind of talk yeah, this really over especially really. like your you know like whatever you know from you like your your knowledge base of sure. sort of ranger history and lore. Uh, so yeah, Reniel, you can roll that lore test if you want. All right, let's see. Um, because I would like this to be successful, I will take an audience uh, D6 because there's no way I'm getting lightning in a bottle and getting a good roll again. <laughs> Not with that kind of attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me do math. Uh, yeah, great success. Okay, so I would say 
two things then you got two. So I'm gonna say you got two things. So regular success and the great additional success. I'll give you two, two notions. First thing that will probably pop out to you, the reference to controlling of animals, the reference to, you see Crabane, these birds and your trip, your journey, and it might be coincidence, might not, but your journey from the blue mountains, uh, all the way to Bree and then southward to, uh, to Tharbad was fraught with various encounters with birds. And while some of those are, are, are probably perfectly explainable, there were a few moments where it did feel as though you all were kind of being tracked or followed or hunted or watched by what appeared to be a flock of dark birds. Uh, and that is in fact what those are. And they're specifically native uh, to kind of this Dunland area. Uh, they are, and they, and they are, and they're not necessarily like ravenous are going to hurt you, but they're more kind of spy birds and a swarm. Sorry, man, would you, would you say they were called? Uh, C-R-E-B-A-I-N, Crabane. Thank you. Uh, so the second thing. Sorry to interrupt. I, oh yeah, no, no worries. Uh, so the second thing, Arineal, I would say is that with the discussion that you had with Tara, with this, this person, you also have, I think you might've been one of them at the very least others have, you saw this individual, this particular, this huntsman. And as you're kind of bouncing these ideas with Tara, like when you saw that one figure, uh, by the Baron Duin, uh, God, a year and a half ago, maybe, uh, that you all witnessed, you saw these dark sails, you felt like this, this sort of nausea, nauseous feeling kind of overwhelm you all. They looked at you in a way that seemed otherworldly in some ways that that kind of green blue lantern the just the way in which the rot around the ground like you saw suddenly the the sort of the expulsion of like worms coming up out of the mud on the on the riverfront the immense power and control they seem to have over these creatures then the morgul blade things are kind of starting to add up and you're you're probably getting very very concerned <laughs> your heart's perhaps starting to sink about what this could actually be and maybe you're it's up to you whether Arineal if you think this is how Arineal would handle it and you the, the idea of this being one of the chief of one of the higher ranking uh sort of captains of the great evil of the land of Mordor Nazgul, perhaps, or maybe maybe something less. Hopefully, something less. Yeah, Arneil definitely sort of kind of as we're talking, she just kind of gets pale, and just Tara, I'm I'm so so very happy to see you, but I f I fear that I've put you in in quite a bit of danger, putting all of these pieces together we're we have been beset by these birds our whole travel down here and and and, and now you're with us hey we have sort of against the deliverance of the shadow our whole lives there's nothing you could have done to make things worse for me i am and will stand by your side and i know you will stand by mine I, I don't doubt your you if they're your battle stories. Uh, I've been in awe of your stories that you have told, and you've helped me with mine. The battle ahead. There was actually like kind of flushing. <laughs> oh, and just Erinil, just um, if there are. Is this a library that might have a chair that she might actually sort of sit down? There on? are there are seats here, or there, and benches and things like that. Not okay. all the furniture is in great condition, but yeah, there's plenty of that. Okay, so I think she would sort of physically just sort of, literally need to sort of take a load off and just. So seeing seeing this sort of visible, obvious visible reaction to something, um, Tara will go and sort of kneel in front of her and make sure that we're still at eye level. Um, that presumably Ares as tall as Tara is <laughs> and uh, 
and uh, well, uh, are you all right? This is uh, this is a work master. Certainly, there is trouble whenever there is a pack of servants of the shadow, and then but if anybody can handle it, it is. I'm I'm sure I I could not handle it all, so I am grateful that you are here. But I sense something else troubles you. And Arinio will just sort of sigh, and if you recall when last we shared drink, we had a member of the group that I had told you about and you've you've met Gilly and you've met Floy uh, but we had an elf with us yes at the time and and she'll kind of go into detail about the trip to Angmar that has come after we last saw each other and leaving Soren Deer there and coming back to try to gather more warriors for the battle but but Tara not not a day goes by that I don't fear that was the wrong choice and our fellowship has grown again and just sort of look around for Daggett and not see him. And now with, with you joining, we just... It's just a lot. And uh, Tara will do the only thing she really knows how to do in this moment and um, kind of look at Ari and ask with her eyes, like, is it all right if I hug you? And Irene will just kind of bow her head a little bit and, and rest her head on your shoulder. Tara hugs her. And I think they just yeah. embrace those friends with her for a minute. We'll, uh, we'll fade from that and we will visit Daggett. Daggett, we spent some time with Black, Black Fong uh, you spent some time. Block Fong. Block you got to pronounce it correctly, or the Block. Tolkien geeks oh, yeah, will be I know. The thing I made up. I know. I got <laughs> totally pronounced it correctly. Uh, you have been hanging the sign. It's been taking you a very long time, hours and hours. Uh, no, what 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 would Daggett be doing? I know you didn't really weren't participating. It wouldn't take you that long to do the sign. You're not required to stay at the library. They're going to be in there for hours. Each of them has been doing yeah. something that's taking hours. So you're welcome to do something else. I'm definitely going to be difficult. Um, that doesn't Daggett sound like would you definitely, at all. <laughs> he would definitely be uh, putzing for like an hour or so. Uh, cleaning the axe, making sure the sign is uh, level. And then he would just start getting a little bit bored. Daggett doesn't really care as much about the lore of anything that's not a dwarf. So the idea of uh, being at a library full of human history just kind of, there's no appeal there. So after uh, hanging out outside, we're pretty close to the gate to leave the south side of the city, right? Absolutely, yeah. I'd assume there'd be a lot of traffic. Whenever I see anyone that looks like a, a city guard, or anything like that, uh, or a thug, as I like to call them. Um, I would just scowl. Wow. Okay. And then after a little bit, I think I would convince myself that I need to be productive. Okay. And I would use that as an excuse to start walking uh, around the city. I think Daggett would tell himself that he wants to build a or craft a case for the axe, like just a, a cover that would go over the blade. Mm-hmm. And he would just use that as an excuse to start exploring closer to the roadhouse, okay. um, looking for a market. All right. So you 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 are right on some fronts. I would say the traffic is not 
extraordinarily heavy, but you do see it's not it's not a trickle, uh, but I would say there's there's not a ton of people. Uh, you do see several of these guards, and you scowl at them. Few of them even th- like consider maybe coming over and giving you a piece of their mind, but it does seem as though they are on a task. As one thing you will observe is that there's maybe about uh, half a dozen or so of them uh, led uh, by what looks to be like a, a relatively young man, uh, maybe a little older than Arineal, but not could, couldn't be too much older than Arineal. Uh, and you can see them kind of marching out with sort of these grim looks on his on their face, and, you, and like he's kind of shouting orders and saying people like Le- leave the dwarf alone. We've got more important things to do. You. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, Mr. Murdoch, yes, sir. And they kind of start moving out and out the causeway and kind of down uh, southward. Eventually, you head oh, over to the road. They're yeah, leaving the city then. They're leaving the city. Yeah. You head over to the road in, uh, and you probably get there. It's midday ish, probably lunchtime rush. Uh, so there's probably a, a not uh, inconsiderable amount of folks here. Uh, I would say maybe a third of them look to be. Uh, part of these guard folks, um, maybe a uh, twenty folks there entirely, and you, whether you want to go inside is entirely up to you. But there are much like the bridge in tables and such outside, people coming and going. If you're just looking to kind of get an idea of where you can go to craft something or where a market might be where you can purchase something, uh, you can do a simple courtesy roll. Would probably be fine. How about that? Uh, yeah, simple courtesy roll with a heart of 18 isn't so simple. Okay, um, okay, okay. I'll take persuade. I don't think, I don't think I would really want to actually start talking to anyone because I, that would just be my excuse in, to convince myself to start walking around. Once okay. I get to the roadhouse, I think I would decide, uh, you know, it's about lunchtime. I could go for a meal. Uh, okay. and I, I do want to go in, see what's in, what's in there what I can stir up. Okay. Uh, you go inside relatively lively on the inside. Uh, it's, it is one of those moments though, as you push through the doors, uh, everyone kind of does the classic kind of turn and look and they stare at you standing there in the, in the middle of the doorway, the light kind of creating the silhouette around you and they all kind of stare at you. For a very I, long moment. I would purposefully stop walking for a long moment as well and just do the slow pan around the room. Eventually, and it's a long beat, and you can tell that there's a few of these guards that are also looking up. You could, you would think probably off duty or something. They look up at you, and eventually they kind of go back to their, to their, their cups or to their plates. Uh, you can see a uh, a man, probably in his 40s or so, balding head, uh, sweating fiercely and constantly kind of bringing his apron up to sort of pat his his forehead. Like, Master Dwarf, uh, are you in the right place? Am I in the wrong place? Kind of looks confused as if he doesn't quite know exactly how to respond to that, but he will... Um, uh, sure. Are you um, you thirsty or, or hungry? Are you looking for a place to stay? Ale and food. He very slowly kind of looks around the room. He sees a couple faces. One of them in a guard uniform gives him a nod. And he's like, very good. Uh, stay wherever you feel comfortable. Coming right up. I would want to sit somewhere like towards the center of the room too, where everyone can see me. Where you're surrounded? Okay, got it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, totally interesting. (laughs) Okay. So yeah, you sit in the middle. uh, Conversation streaming around you. A couple moments go past and the man returns. He's got a pickle tankler of ale. Sits down in front of you. Gives you some food. uh, Kind of not a... It's a big old chunk of nondescript meat and what looks like a single carrot uh, that has been steamed. Uh, and he kind of places it down in front of you. And he, you exchange. We don't need to go over the money. You exchange money. Does it look as, like someone spit in my ale? 
Uh, roll a scan test. God, I really want you to feel this test. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely passed. I got a 15, yeah. but one of them is a six, so it's a great success. Okay, there is... It, the head is is coming down on it, uh, and there is a little bit of white residue and such that's t- at the top, but you're pretty sure it's just foam. You're, you're, you're pretty confident. I'll take the risk. I would have drank yeah. it anyways. I just wanted to know. Okay. Take a swig. It's decent. It's not the same ale that you think w- that Titus was serving at his place, uh, which he spoke... Uh, quite eloquently about as being from someone from the Middle Island, uh, one of the brewmasters room there is producing, but uh, but it's it's decent, it's it's serviceable, nothing nothing fantastic. Uh, uh, when he came over to uh, drop off the food, I would like to ask him: Is everyone always so friendly here? He kind of looks down to you and like he says. Well, sir, Mr. Dwarf, uh, it's just that... And he kind of leans in really close, kind of looking over your shoulder, kind of at that guy who gave him the nod to make sure he's not looking. Dwarves have caused a bit of a stir of light, and uh, that's all. That's all it is. I'm quite happy to have your patronage. Uh, So... I I would give him a wink. Okay. We're known nice. cr- for uh, creating headlines. He, bl- he blushes a little bit. Head- headlines? Headlines? Like, like you don't have... in the forehead? You don't have any papers circulated around here? Maybe it's just a dwarf thing. No. No, no. Paper circulation, sir. We like rumors about us, is what I'm saying. We like creating stories we cause trouble and i say that a little too loud and everyone just kind of like you hear clink 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 as like you know knives or tankers are placed down and everyone kind of looks over towards you uh no trouble i'll assume with the ale sir he says and he kind of just like kind of waves at everybody else and they kind of go back to what they're doing oh look at the ale i suppose there's no trouble Will there be anything else, sir? Not for now. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And he goes off back to his duties. Anything else you're looking to do here? I would loudly grumble and complain about the state of the food as I'm eating it. Okay. (laughs) After a moment or two of hearing that, uh, he'll come back and he'll say... uh, yeah, uh, is there something wrong with the mutton? It, uh, it freshly. Oh, is that uh, what this is? I couldn't tell. Yeah, a single well, carrot. It's very, it's very large. That it's not say. even boiled properly. Like uh, I, I chipped a tooth on this carrot. Oh, uh, very sorry, sir. Oh, I can replace the carrot, and then you hear the sound of a chair getting pushed out, and then you see a man come, kind of stand next to your, uh, next to your table. Uh, it's the same man who gave the nod. F- healthy beard uh, on him, actually. Uh, you would probably peg him maybe in his early 40s or so. And he kind of looks down and he says, uh, Master Dwarf, is there a reason you are acting uh, so disruptively? Some of us are here uh, on a on a break midday in between shifts and kindly would ask you to uh, behave yourself in public. That would be the first time I've been kindly asked anything in this town. I know how difficult it is for dwarves to do such a thing. My real question is, who could eat this food day in, day out, if you're on break and you choose to come here? I just... Your wife must not be a very good cook. He kind of looks down at you. Can, you can see he's doing some calculations in his head, and I'm going to roll to see the result of that calculation. <laughs> and he punches you in the face. 
That's fair. <laughs> this happens so often with Daggett as he punches you in the face. Uh, let me roll. I, let me actually roll his check. Uh, here we go. <laughs> of course, I get two sixes in that. That is a twenty-five <laughs> to hit. Uh, uh, that's just barely a miss. Uh, okay. Amazing. Uh, I'm gonna say he's going to punch you for one point of damage. Uh, then he's gonna grab the back of your head. Uh, for his bonus successes, and he's going to smash your head into the table two times. Uh, into the uh, how much damage for table? each table smack? Uh, two it takes two more, so you'll take a total of three points. It's a brawl test, so okay, I'm not gonna. It's fair. just one. I'm not gonna add any extra yep. strength. Uh, I came in here looking to cause trouble. You I have done don't so. <laughs> want to. <laughs> escalate things more than a barroom brawl. But I would like to punch him back. Uh, okay. I, I'm not going to like grab for a weapon or anything. This is but a guard! I, what are you doing? He hit me first. <laughs> not just any guard. Uh, oh no! Yeah, yeah. I don't expect this to go well. <laughs> go right ahead. So brawling here. Yeah. Add, uh, add plus two to your parry. Uh, he's got plus two parry, so add two to your your target number. I rolled a gandy though. Okay. Uh just the one success brawling. Uh okay. my strength is it's seven. just it's, it's it's just one. Uh a brawling attack is just Oh one. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. My bad. We did that wrong before. Uh okay. So yeah, you punch him back in the stomach and you hear him just go Whoa! as a bit of his his uh the air comes in and you hear all of a sudden chairs pushing out, pushing out. Uh and then he says, No. No. I've got this. And he kind of cracks his knuckle, knuckles. Come on, dwarf. You think you're a, a tough man here? You think you can beat me? Let's go. And he kind of cr and his knuckles crack even louder. Cracks his neck here and there. And he kind of like a couple of the other guys come over. These other guards pick up the table and like the table that you're sitting at and just move it away. And so now there's a nice big space in the middle. And he stretches and he steps back and he kind of looks at you, puts both of his fists up. I uh, slowly take off what's left of my uh, bags and pouches and things like that. Okay. Uh, toss my braided beard over my shoulder. Put okay. my hands up. All right, we're going to do this. Uh, we're not going to do a full combat. That's not what yeah, this is going to yeah. be. This is going to be more of a... We're going to do a... Uh, who basically gets to, let's say, five quicker. And that's the one who wins. Okay? It's going to so be him. We we can skip ahead if you want. No, no, no. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's do this. You can use... You're welcome to use audience, Ty. As the two of you are you moving around, you're moving around. And then, yeah, let's do first round. Uh, roll a brawling attack. I am so confident that he's going to kick your ass. <laughs> I am not going to use any any extra dice. I will <laughs> use an audience die here. Any chance you want advantage? Because we've got a lot. Thank you, three-eyed cat. I just rolled. I wish I had used advantage because I rolled a one on the feet die. Oh, um, you said plus two parry? Plus two to his parry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's very good. At I this. would have made it if you didn't have the parry. But uh, okay. no. Well, I rolled a 26. Uh, and, uh, I also got an extra success. Uh, so he's up two to zero after round one on you, uh, as you kind of swing out, he very easily depths out of the way and he does a quick one two jab with the left hand, right, right down to the top of your, just the top of your nose. You just feel it kind of smush down a little bit of a crunch. Your eyes kind of water for a bit. And then when you're, by the time your, your, your eyelids kind of open back up, there's this big meaty right cross coming and just catches you right in the cheek. You feel a bit of saliva and maybe blood kind of splurt out, kind of drop down on top of your plate a few feet away. And let's go to round two. Uh, I'm not going to waste the audience dice anymore. No, uh, please actually, do, please do. Cat have, was nice enough to, to we grab have, some. So, yeah, waste. I think I will. Just, I'll use another uh, just, just to be clear, we have 67. So not if you would like waste, advantage, also, uh, go for it. Uh, not a waste, not a waste. Yeah, let's make an advantage <laughs> instead of the audience dice. So just five, not six. Okay. Uh, okay, that is just barely a success because 
I, I either roll good on the feet or on the d6s. Okay. Uh, I got a 15 there. That's what I needed. 13 plus two. Perfect. I rolled a 19. Is that good to hit you? I don't know. Uh, not quite, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, it hits. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Okay. So he's still up three to I, one. Yeah, I have a period time, of 15. You come back. You, you, your height is what it is. You swing out. You catch him in the stomach again. But as he's coming down, he kind of does that kind of that forearm elbow hit as he kind of catches you right in your jaw, the same place where he hits you with the right cross. And you can feel this is going to well, this is going to be so bad when it heals, if it heals. All right, keep going. Another round. Yep. Uh, use five more audience dice. Yeah, <laughs> I love this. Got I'm it. Baiting so many dice right now. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Okay. That is a great success. Okay. So that's going to be two successes. You're going to get two hits on him couple rabid shots at this point maybe he's leaning down you actually get an uppercut and you catch him right on the jaw you see a tooth kind of go flying out of his mouth he kind of steps back really quick and he kind of kind of comes back in he throws the jab which you manage to sort of dodge out of the way but then his knee comes up and kind of catches you right in the chin uh and so he will in fact move up it's right now i believe it's four to three as we hit another round so go ahead and new uh, just one audience day on this one. Okay. All right. I rolled a one on the feet die again. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I rolled uh, a sorry. You bastard. I did. Uh, first so time. Six, five, two. Uh, what's the math? No, I didn't make it. Okay. Uh, that's a success. I have a 21 in total. I did roll a sorry. Uh, so he is going to, as you're, you're very dizzy from the sudden chin shot, uh, you swing out and at this point you can almost probably feel your arms are a little heavier and you're a little slower and he's easily kind of dancing around you. You can hear at this point now the crowd kind of cheering up. You hear like, finish him off, thaw down, finish him off. <laughs> we'll put him in the pittery with the other ones. All this kind of talk. What was his name? Thar now. Thar now. Which Oops. Tara would know is the <laughs> eldest son of Master Gurnow and probably the yep, second I recognize most powerful the person yep. in the entire city. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Hey, good job. Okay. You found him. He, as you spin around, he like kind of reaches back. He doesn't even do any pretenses, and he just swings down as hard as he can, and <laughs> and everything goes black. And you were gonna say you are knocked out. Yep. Yep. That we'll sounds figure good. out what happens to him. In a little while, as we're going to go back to the library with the with the with the nerds. So, <laughs> several hours have passed. Your research has has been uh, has has been done. Uh, hey, Gilly, that you, it? <laughs> <laughs> there's a disturbance in the forest. You're like, oh no! Please, please tell me he didn't just get into a into a bar ball with the eldest son of the. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, Gilly, let's go back to you, actually. Let's start with you first. As you were okay. given a book uh, specifically to read through, I am going to need you to roll, as this is actually in an ancient tongue, uh, the writing itself... Actually, wait, no, is it? Let me double check. No, it's not. Just give me a regular lore test. As you're reading through this book that has sketches of black block fong, uh, as Daggett pronounces it, among other weapons... And a lot of text that goes along with it in various, like, you know, heraldry and ornamentation, things like that. Let me know how you do. I am muted. Hello. I got an extraordinary success, Jeff. Oh, my. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, I just give you basically everything now, can't I? Uh, I would say uh, you learn a few things. First, you you would basically glean that this is somehow, this is some sort of... Um, you think this is, you're not sure if it's an inventory or if it's, uh, or, or sort of someone documenting like treasures maybe that they've either seen or collect. It's hard to say whether it was actually collected, but you can tell that it was written by someone uh, very high up in the sort of leadership of Cardolan, which was one of the successor kingdoms uh, of when Arnor split apart and before Arnor was then sort of attempted to be rejoined. Uh, and as you're reading, you actually, uh, are reading a, a great deal about Rudauer's treachery, uh, and you're getting a lot of detail about how, um, the people, uh, of the, 
of that successor kingdom kind of betrayed Arthedain, betrayed Cardolan. And although obviously the three kingdoms sometimes squabbled over certain lands and borders, uh, you know, specifically Amonsul, whether top the specific location, it was never quite so bad. And so it details like Rudal's like heavy treachery. It starts to talk also about the war with Angmar, which was something like 1200 years ago or so, give or take. And it lasted a very, very long time and how Angmar kind of swayed Rudauer. Um, and as you're kind of getting into what looks to be some kind of like inventory or some sort of uh, documentation of weaponry or tr used by certain like lieutenants or uh, noteworthy champions of, of Angmar's forces, that's when you come across this entry for Black Fang. And there is a name that suddenly stands out to you because you've heard this name before. Gulfane, a weaponsmith, apparently, of some kind, or weapon master. And because you got an extraordinary success, I'm going to give you everything, who was actually much to the great shock of those uh, in Cardolan who are documenting some of these battles, was a dwarf. A dwarf who, from what they'd learned... Uh, some for some reason, unknown reason, had betrayed his people uh, and had essentially, some, for some reason or another, aligned themselves with Angmar, uh, with, uh, with the shadow. Now, the, there is like a section that suggests that for at least a brief period of time, this weapon was actually in the, uh, in the possession of either Cardolan or Cardolan princes or perhaps a, a rude hour keep you're, you're not sure it was like kind of locked in a vault somewhere uh and that said it was probably crafted by this man and it's believed to have um been forged in the fires of the gray mountains uh perhaps even gundabad itself uh, and there was apparently something with fascination with dragons uh, as reference to like uh, it was it was specifically taking um the scales and teeth and bone of of dragons that were uh, kind of the youngling dragons on a place called the Withered Heath. Uh, I don't think you would know these that term necessarily, uh, but you can look it up later. Um, and that this apparently kind of caused some sort of assault by these adult dragons, almost as like revenge. And so like Golfain's entire uh, sort of grouping, uh, like his, his clan, his family was kind of attacked or, or wiped out by this revenge by this th these dragons. But somehow... He, he kind of escaped his life, or he escaped with his life. And that's sort of where his treachery began. And so it was just kind of this long story. And then it kind of occurs to you, Gilly, that basically everything that Lottie's people were doing, where they were going around, they were finding old keeps, they were finding old towers and castles of Rudauer, of Cardolan, of, of Arthedane, and they were going through vaults and they were looking for things. And it, maybe, maybe they discovered the place where this weapon was actually being held. And so I'll say that wow, is what okay. you're able to, that is everything. You got everything there. Wow. I wasn't prepared to tell some of that, but some of it, you got it all. Okay, cool. And I would also say like, you do recognize again, there is that sort of uh, crafts, craftsman's like symbol kind of etched into it, like a maker's mark basically, which we've, which we've talked about before as a way of connecting certain things. Um, would Gilly be able to put together that this might be like a cursed object just because of the history that it's had in our, uh, I will say extraordinary success. Uh, and you asking the question, there's no way you can know for sure, but your suspicion seems a reasonable suspicion. Okay. 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 So we'll kick back then to Floy and Arineal uh, and Tara, who are in the library proper. Was there anything else you all wanted to do while you were here? Nothing for Tara, thank you. Okay. Floy or Arineal, anything more you wanted to do in the library? Maybe one last question about the river here. I think you just mentioned it doesn't really flow, is it? Or does it? Okay, I'll answer in an Agna. Well, okay. it, it flows. Uh, however, uh, the uh, river 
of the Grey Flood uh, many years ago, long before I was even born. Uh, and there were much larger ships that were able to go up and down the river in various ways. Uh, a great source of, of trade, civilization. Um, many, many folks from different places converged here. However, the river itself does need to be dredged from time to time. And that is not something that Master Gurn now has yet uh, decided to do, nor does he honestly have the capacity to do so. Uh, what this means is that there is all manner of rubbish and vegetation and other things growing within the uh, within the river itself. It's not a very it's not a very clean water nearby. I would recommend you probably boil it before doing anything with it. Uh, but smaller boats, boats that do not have uh, particularly deep holes, um, and flat bottom boats as well, uh, can pass by without trouble. Uh, it's why you don't see many. And at the end of her state, my stomach rumbles. Oh, pardon me. Piers, I'm hungry. I could go for some mutton. Well, I have none. So uh, I do not allow food in the library. I do not want grease on the pages of my treasures. Oh, of course. Like you have to make another sign. <laughs> <laughs> Hawk, I have an idea. A no food sign as well. Yes. <laughs> Miss Kettlegrass. And so after Gilly does that too. <laughs> uh, uh, Irineal, is there anything else you wanted to do? Okay. okay. Gilly, anything for you? Um, Gilly would reach out to um, uh, and see if there's anything that she can recommend for like purifying or removing curses. Oh dear. Uh, I will tell you that with an extraordinary success, you don't know no, anything anymore rolling. You can peek in some of her other books, none of which seem to have the same sort of subject matter. Okay. I will tell you that the answers to those questions are not found here. Okay. And that's just what I wanted to just make yeah. sure there was nothing that there might be. I would say there is there's nothing in her little secret library here that seems to suggest it. Nothing in the book that suggested okay. it. There's really nothing in that book that suggests it was cursed. Like, like people were saying it was like a weapon of shadow and like it was, yeah. you know, it was something of great evil. If That's they could destroy it, they would. Yeah. Like from that. like Gilly's interaction with evil and such. Well, yeah. I mean, and plus Floyd had a whole situation. So it, yeah. I think it's a perfectly valid question, but the answer to that's not here. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So we'll say all of you then with the exception of Daggett, reconvene outside of the library. Several hours have passed. There's still a few hours of daylight left, maybe two. It's probably middle of the afternoon. Uh, Daggett is no longer on the steps. What do you guys like to do? Did he tell anyone where he went? No. Where he might was... he have gone? I don't, I don't know. I He's suppose it's here. lunchtime. He may have gone to get some food. Can wander back. Maybe we'll spot him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I'm will sure say... he listened to my warning about the roadhouse, so we <laughs> totally don't need to check there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say when you uh, you start wandering around, uh, you can roll. Ah, uh, we don't need to roll anything. Uh, you start wandering around if you're hungry specifically. If you're going down the main thoroughfare uh, that kind of heads back towards the ferry, you will see. Uh, kind of a, a crowd, uh, a small crowd of about five or six people uh, that are huddled in an alleyway outside of the roadhouse. And you see many of them are laughing. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Does Tara recognize any of them? Maybe one or two could be a guard. Maybe, uh, a, uh, let's see, friendly. Uh, sure, there's maybe one person... That you recognize, uh, maybe you've had a drink with them uh, at the bridge inn or something before. Sure. Uh, Can okay. we see what they're laughing at? So, uh, uh, if, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you want to look for what they're laughing at, uh, you peek around. It's not hard to see. Uh, but you see that laying in the ground uh, of the alleyway uh, is a, uh, a lump, a very familiar looking lump. Uh, that you all would know is Daggett. <laughs> oh, no. And, and Gilly will just 
and quietly say to the group, oh, the Daggett? That's Daggett. What did he go and do? Looks over and it's like, uh, that, that's okay. Uh, I, I know one of those people. Let, let me go, but let me go talk to him. And let, let me see what happened. And Iridial's going to kind of look at Gilly and look at the guards and Joel just kind of hold back just a little bit since we sort of just got the whole talking to about not causing trouble while we were here. Well, yeah, and Gilly will kind of grab you anyways uh, and because we didn't really talk about what I discovered in the library. Um, I, I, I'll tell you more later, but I, I think his weapon is cursed like Floyd's armor was. Oh, well. Um, mm. So I, I, we just need to keep an eye on him. From, from over there, though. From, from over there. <laughs> okay. And so she'll just the, kind of lock her arm. The two of you step a little further away. Taryn, if you're getting closer to the... You're going to get close up. Floy, are you doing anything? Yeah, I'm going to peek around the corner for a bit. Wait for Taraneth to sort of chat them up. Okay. To get an idea of what they've done. Okay. So, Tara, as you get closer, <laughs> you notice that in addition to there, there being a, a daggett-shaped lump in the ground... You notice that, uh, well, they've uh, they've decorated him a little bit. Uh, as you see, various pieces of produce uh, and mutton uh, have been affixed to parts of his body to accentuate things. Uh, his ears, his eyes, his nose, etc. Uh, you can see that there's all sorts of like like sheep wool uh, that is kind of un, kind of patched here and there. It's not like it's like a, like a mild tar and feathering. There's like there's like grease and then there's like sheep wool that's been sort of fixed here and there. Uh, you can see that his beard has kind of been sort of decorated uh, with what looks like just grub. Uh, and uh, and oh, now that you're here, oh boy, it smells. And, and uh, it smells much like sheep shit. Uh, and uh, you can see no. that it has, there is, it's not, you're not sure if they, it doesn't look like they smothered it on him or anything, but it looks like they just sort of threw him in the alley. Sure. Yeah, he just happens to have some cheap shit around. Sure. And people are just kind of laughing at him. And, and you just hear like, what kind of, they thought he could fight Thaw now. What kind of moron comes in the middle of the road, the roadhouse, picks a fight with the, just the toughest guy in the entire city. <laughs> That's our goodness. Oh, hey, Daryl, look at this one right here. Oh, my goodness. You missed it. You missed it. It was so... Oh, it was hilarious. You don't get that kind of entertainment all that often, but I'll tell you. Whew. What what happened? Uh, Bra <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Oh. Bron, uh, what, what happened? Oh, um, well, <laughs> it, it was great. There we were, like, uh, eating a, an, early, an early meal uh, inside, you know, inside the roadhouse. And this dwarf comes in, stands in the middle of the door in the doorway for like a half a minute, staring around like he's some sort of lord waiting for someone to come see him or escort him to a proper proper place to eat. Then he gets down there, he chats, no, oh, he chats with the barkeep, and then you know, now Ron did a wonderful job, made very nice muttons, actually quite good today. Bought a few carrots for us, put it down. And then this fella starts insulting them right to his face, all over left and right that the that the carrots were uh, weren't cooked properly. He, honestly, he was kind of right about that. They 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 all they probably could have soaked for a little longer, but the mutton was delicious. Anyhow, Thurnow, of course, uh, Thurnow, of course, comes over. So he doesn't like to see people disrespected. Certainly, Tr tries to give the dwarf a little talking to, and. <laughs> The dwarf gets all lippy. I don't think he knew who he's talking to. He said a few things he probably should. And then the two of them, fair and square, fair and square, mind you, brawl right there in the middle of the bar. And they got a few licks in, to his credit. But boy, did Thor now just, oh, just, I, I gave him a lesson. And then he left. Now... <laughs> Why did you do this to him? Oh, well, we didn't do it. And thought I did not. He said, you know, leave him be and whatnot. And, you know, when he comes up, he put a coin or two, pay for a beer for the man. 
but you know how the boys are. They want a little entertainment. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a guest of mine, Ron. Oh, oh, you know him? Oh, not not excessively well, but he is a traveling companion to a friend of mine. And you didn't tell I, him, maybe. I, don't pick a fight in the roadhouse. I, I must not have. All right, all right, all right, everyone. We've uh, you've seen enough. We've had a fun. Thank you, Bron. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bron. Thank you. All right. Well, go ahead. Here's a here's a bit of salt. Rub it underneath that big old broken nose of his. It'll probably wake him up if you want. Yeah, yeah. This guy, we'll, we'll him probably in the wake flood. him up later. We'll, just, we'll just wake him up later. Not chuck right him now. in the river. I'm sure that'll be fine. We'll wash everything off. Sure, sure. Thank okay. you. Okay. No I'm worries. Sorry. Bye, Tara. I'm sorry and this. I'm sorry this happened. I don't know. It, it was entertaining. Is what it was. Oh, so delightful. Oh. Next time but, you're at Titus's, let me buy you a drink. Oh, will do. Will do. I'm holding you to that. And he walks off. At that point, all the guards Floyd, disperse. Yeah. yeah. Can, well, come on in. Okay. He got into a fight with Gurnau's son. That looks like he got what it what came. He's fine. I'm sure he is, but I don't think Gerna is going to let us talk out of the dwarf contract now as easily. I'm really more concerned about that. This is your this fucking what this washes off, as Braun said. <laughs> and you can see Tara is getting like actually agitated. Well, from what we know. Gurnau and the sons don't really get along, so it's mine not even move up. His oldest son is well respected in in the city. He's not a lick spittle like the rest of them. Then the best we can do is hope word doesn't move. Come on, Daggett, wake up. No, I, I have this salt, but maybe we should get him out of the alley first before we wake him up. Just start slapping his cheeks back and forth. Come on, Daggett. <laughs> Daggett, you wake up and there is Floyd smacking oh. your cheeks. And one side of your face is hurting so bad. And so when Floyd slaps it, oh, like you're missing a tooth, like your whole side where he just kept pounding away at that one part of your face. There you see I it's instinctively put my hands back up like I'm still being pummeled. <laughs> <laughs> what Floyd. did you do? Nothing. I, I stopped for lunch. No, you didn't. You picked a fight with the one person you should not have. I think he sort of picked a fight with me, too. Dad, you will forgive me if I do not believe that. No, I won't forgive you. I said it. It's true. And she shoves him. <laughs> oh, dude, what? You want to you wanna beat on me now, too? And she looks at her when else. She's like, you know you need to speak to him. And kind of stalks out of the alley. He's... Daggett, you clearly, I mean, you're seems like you picked a fight with someone uh, a little bit stronger than you and it seemed like you uh, you know and she just sort of points to the general condition that you're in uh, it's going to take forever to clean this out of my beard do, do we do we really need to speak more about this and she's kind of looking over at Tara like do we need to pile on did you at least rough up the other guy? Away. She's she her back is to you. So you, you have a, it's actually a private conversation if you want. What'd you say, Floy? Did you at least rough up the other guy? I look at my knuckles to see how bruised they are. A little I bit. Think so? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, then we'll call it a win. Come on. Yeah. It was a win. I definitely won. It, there were so many more of them than. Uh, it was just me by myself, and there were like ten of them. Did and like this entire time, Gilly's kind of standing off to the side. 
she's got her arms crossed and she's like agitatedly like tapping her foot as she's staring Daggett down. And then she kind of does like she comes towards you and she puts her hands on her hips and she because you're still on the ground. So she's talking down to you. Why did you think it was a good idea to walk into a bar, tavern, whatever this is, full of guards and then be snarky? Snarky? No, I just. And then I realize, like, I start patting my down myself down, looking for my stuff. Where's, where's my ex? Is not. I gotta go back way. in there. I get back up and I start heading towards the, Wait, the entrance. We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll retrieve your, your belongings. We'll 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 take care of that. For I'll get you. it. No, 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 it's no my no, ex. No, we'll, and we'll give your UX right back. It just seems like going back inside might not be a good idea. What, you think they would just hand it off to you? They don't know you. They've stolen from me. I should get my... It's my rightful property. You're right, Dad. Get to, come on, let's go get it. Thank you. You smell like shit. You should stay outside. <laughs> <laughs> They're heading towards the entrance. Okay. You go back. So you, you go really inside. Just like... Yeah, you go inside. Far fewer people are here at this time. It's because it's, it's it's later in the afternoon. It's between sort of the dinner crowd uh, and the earlier crowd. And so there's a handful of folks here. And you go in and you can see in, in Floyd, you look around. There's maybe six people sitting around. Maybe two of them have the same kind of guard wear on. Uh, the same bald early 40s uh, innkeeper comes and uh, comes over very quickly, face kind of contorts as he gets kind of close. Uh, Master Dwarves, uh, are you, uh, he speaks to Floyd, you friends with this one? Uh, yeah, my cousin here, he lost his ex. Have you seen that? Well, we've got his things, don't worry. Tharnow specifically said to keep him safe. Once, one moment, please. And he kind of goes back into the kitchen. He comes back out. He's got like a bag. He's got your axe. And kind of hey, hey, here you go. I'm very sorry the carrot wasn't to your liking, set. I, I take my stuff and I, I look down. The mutton really was pretty good. I'm sorry. That wasn't about you. Yep. Well, well thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um although I know you spit in my ale. And I'll take my no. stuff and turn around there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he turns to he turns to Floyd. Sir, I did not spit in his ale. I absolutely did it. Of course, I believe you. Just pardon him. He's had a rough couple of days in the city. But if you don't mind, I'd take a meal as well. Oh, sure, sure. Of course, of course. Yes, absolutely. And he kind of fetches you the same same basic meal for the day. Uh, meanwhile, outside. Boy, you can't eat here. They just beat me up. <laughs> is that you can't part, be a is that part of it? No, no sir. I, I beg your pardon. I, I, I don't mean to disparage your cousin, hey, was being a bit hostile and ornery and disrespectful to Master Gurnow's son. With all due respect, with all due respect. I see, I see. That was Master Gurnow's son. Yes, there was, there was, uh, there was Thar now. Yeah. Uh, eldest. Just click my jaw a couple times good to know some folks think that he kind of looks around for a second and he lowers his voice some folks think that when Mr. when Master Gur now passes Thal now is the likely successor though Master Gur now has an officially name a successor which is part of the reason the brothers have a tendency to you know bot heads and such I would rummage around in my coin port first for about three times the cost of the meal. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I started trouble in your place. The oh, mutton was oh, quite good. Oh, oh, oh. Well, this is more than generous. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank Don't you. sit it's my for the three here. What's that? It's for the three here. As a point to Irineal and Gilly. Oh, did, uh, did they come inside? <laughs> Gilly and Irineal, did you go inside or Tara? Or is that I feel like we're close? lurking just outside. <laughs> <laughs> the doors so open. Don't, the when doors you don't hear open. things crashing, the doors open. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Come in. Come in. Come in. Uh, kind no, of no, I'm in. not paying for you. I'm, this, that's for you. That's not oh. for meals. That's an oh. apology. 
for causing a ruckus in your bar. I'm sorry. Oh, no apology necessary. The ale really Mr. did Dwarf. taste like spit. I, you you I, sure you didn't spit in it? I didn't. I didn't spit in it. I don't have any barrels. Okay, I'm from, sorry. It's I not your fault. I didn't get my delivery this morning from the Middle Isles. I'm sorry. It's it's my own brew. It's it's it's. I don't serve it unless I don't. I, I, the mutton I, I, was I, quite I, good. The mutton was good. Thank thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, Floyd, we you, can't eat. You here. didn't Come on. receive your delivery. Well, it happens sometimes. It's just a question of you know. The farmers are having some trouble, kind of, with ingredients with all of the that that wolf stuff going on. Uh, oh, and yeah, and so some of them, some of the foods and supplies aren't making it to the folks that need it, and you, 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 supply chain issues, I suppose oh, you might say. Illy, Floy, I smell like sheep turds. Can we please just go? Yeah, dude, I'm already halfway through. Well, I've got rooms. I've got a basin if you want to clean up, Mr. Dwarf. If we stay here, like how, how late is it, idea. actually? It's, is it like getting close to dark where we'd miss the ferry? It is not quite. Yeah, there's still maybe an hour, slightly over an hour of, of light left. There's probably one ferry left that'll kind of that'll run right before sunset. Does it feel like we need to rush now to get to there? No, you could get there. Okay. You could get there because you're not that far away. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you're looking at the map, you're technically at 11. So right there uh, where I'm pinging for you guys. Uh, and so okay. you're maybe a five minute walk or so from where the ferry is. I'd meets. rather not be on the ferry smelling like sheep turds. I suppose I should bathe here. It's, yeah, it's possible they throw you over if that's the case. But yeah, I'll, 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 I'll fetch you a, a basin in a private room. You can clean yourself up. It's the least off. Uh, Tara peeking her head in and seeing that people are not really getting ready to leave will walk walk in as well. Okay. So you go in, everyone gets a meal. It's yep. it's a little earlier than the rush, so it's, it's you kind of have the place not quite to yourself, so you can still have some folks kind of lingering. You get some eyes on you uh from the, the the other guards that are kind of lingering here, but no one kind of causes trouble at this point. Uh, but uh, is there anything you wanted to do? We can, or we can just move past and say you, you've had your meal, and we could uh, move on to the next thing. I think I'm ready to move on. Uh, okay, just a quick if in those wargs. Yeah, if he's had like rumor of any huntsmen or wargs from this guy, because he's sort of in like a guard's place. Maybe he's heard guards talking about it. Uh, that's true. Uh, I'll tell you what. You can roll roll social test. You're gonna you're gonna be able to do this at favored because of the tip from Daggett, and you've been fairly kind to him. Uh, but whatever social skill you want, whether it's persuade or um, or uh, what else would be good? Courtesy might be good. Yeah, I can do courtesy because I can go for a magical success for my ruby here. Oh yeah, nice. that's right. Nice. And Twilight Ruby. I know that in a while. Got a great success with that. Twilight Ruby is that how you pronounce it? It's ah. the it's the twig light. Twigligby. Uh, twiggle twiggligby. All right. Um. Okay. So, uh, how many successes did you get? The Three magical, total. Three total. Magical okay. and a great success. Um. So at a certain point, yeah, he'll he'll come over. We'll say the guards left leave, and he kind of kind of got the cloth. He's kind of wiping his hands, and he's like, "Um, I've I've heard some things. Uh, yeah, there's uh, um, fortunately, I, I, you know, I'll get I'll get my mutton from the city, so there's not as much of an issue there. But sometimes, you know, a few of those go missing too here and there. But uh, but in the, in the in the outskirts, like the the farmers and things, where we get some of our, our vegetables and a few other things here and there, turkeys. Oh gosh, oh I could go for a nice big turkey right now. Never mind. However, um, there's been yeah, there's been some trouble. Uh, there's been wolves and some say wolves. Uh, they've been prowling about. Uh, apparently, they've been. Oh no, I was seeming systematic in a way like they're they're poking and prodding or scouting or some and the 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 guards they they've got you know weird theories and such i don't know but uh they think it's connected to the boats because apparently 
they had a witness at some point who saw uh, a man uh, get off uh, the boats in the middle of the night uh, and he saw a, a pack of wolves kind of come with him and a few other men and such. And then they just kind of wandered off. And uh, at some point, I suppose they got back on. I, I don't know. Uh, but um, the thing is, uh, the, the witness, well, he's went mad. He's just babbling something nonsense. And, and I, uh, he used to come in and drink all the time here, you know. Old man, uh, he said uh, probably, probably wasn't entirely right in the head. But he, he could get through the day, and he, he was, could tell a joke, quite lovely, uh, missing half his teeth, so most of the time I had to cut his mutton up for him. That's off the point. However, it was just, uh, ah, he's just gone mad. I was just babbling something fierce about it. Yeah. Terrible thing, terrible thing. But they, uh, they were up the river uh, to the north, they said, they uh, they said that uh, they found him uh, on a on a rickety old pier by this old uh, this old statue. I know the statue because Master Gurnow wanted years ago try to it used to be standing and they were going to try to take it down and float it down the river. <laughs> oh no, oh no, floating. Yeah, I know. We were going to try to float it down the river and then you know put it inside the city is some sort of adornment but it never worked but it was there that's where they found him on rolling around and such babbling to himself barely we could get his statue, story right? out you did yeah Joker. yeah we, i've been there we've been there no well i don't know if they go there all the time but that's where that's where this one saw it so Well, thanks for your time, then. Sure, sure. It's what? just a lot of terrible things going on around here. You've got this, this, this whole mess. You got the orcs, oh, and that's one of the reasons. And he kind of leans into what's probably why Tharna was probably quick to anger, as he's been the one leading the charge on that, he's trying to deal with it. Uh, we don't want to want to nip that in the bud. We don't want another, you know, another amassing like we had a few years back. And then we've got the Dunlandings just robbing everyone coming up from Gondor. And it's not like we get a ton of folks coming up from there anyway. But the few who do come up, well, they're going to go back and say, hey, well, Rob, don't come up here anymore. And then suddenly we're not going to have anyone coming up here no more. So it's been uh, lots of things going on. Is 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 We're on edge a bit. Do you know where we may find Tharnell? No. Well, he, he comes in here in the back here for dinner. Is he comes in in the mornings? Um, but uh, I know that he's he's probably by a southern guy. I would imagine, if not there, then he's probably doing a scout with some of his men. Uh, they've been trying to find whether this orc. I even gave him a name. Uh, did you know that orcs have names? I didn't know this. But they call them. Aglaw the Unbroken. Like, seems a bit grandiose to me, but hey, I'm just an innkeep. But they're looking for, you know, where they're a messing, and he's just getting frustrated because they can't find him. He's getting outsmarted. And he kind of looks around really quick, realizing what he's about to say. Oh, he's getting outsmarted by an orc. <laughs> oh, goodness, poor fella. All he wants to do is make a name for himself. He was going to, I heard him one night, he got so drunk that he started talking about how he was going to, he was going to go to, to your, your home. What's the, what's the one called? You know, the one where everyone died. It was super tragic. It's in the Misty Mountains. You know what it's called. Come on. It's on the tip of my tongue. Cook. You're a terrible oh. dwarf. That's one of the names. It had a different one, but that's one of them. He's going to go there. He's going to get all your riches and he's going to come back and he's going to, he's going to take over. He said, but short of that, he wants to deal with this orc fella. 
make a name for himself, win the hearts of the people, and take over from his father. Mm. Noble efforts. Um, what was the name of the guy who witnessed the man get off the boat? Oh, my, my old friend? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. We call him Old Raggy. But old Raggy? Where are we I don't know what his that? real name is. He just wears a lot of rags, so, and he's old. Where could we find him? Uh, oh, they took him. Oh, who took him? Who took him? No, the guards did. They, oh. they questioned him and such, and then from what I heard, the room is he's gone mad. He's just babbling away. Maybe he's in the Red Palace. I, I, I don't know. Okay. okay. Arinia will sort of hand back her bowl. The mutton was very good. Oh, th thank you. Thank you. He kind of takes the bowl back. Anything else I can do for you all? No, thank you so much. We do have the ferry to catch. Oh, yeah, you best hu hustle, for sure. You don't want to... I assume you... Yeah, we have rooms here, if you'll... It kind of looks kind of hopeful and... Yeah. Like we, I've got rooms. Uh, we do have rooms already with Titus. His face kind of like... Oh. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah... No, no, it's not you. We, we have business on the north side. Oh, sure, 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 sure. This, yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. No, no, it's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Well, you all have a good evening, then. Enjoy your stay at the, at the Bridge Inn. Yeah. The Aggie will come out of the back room. Uh, he's still got quite a bit in his beard, and he's, like, trying to comb it with his hands. Uh, but he does smell a lot better. Oh, you look dapper, Master Dwarf. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll clean up for you. No worries, no worries. On the house for the troubles you faced today. I I left coin in the room for you. Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. Uh, would you like a room? Your friends are go ahead and. Oh, I suppose you probably don't want to stay here, do you? Yeah. Does probably... Tharnow stay here often, or does he only show up for lunch? No. He stays at the Red Palace. Uh, well, when he's in the city, sometimes they camps with his boys all south when they're out on, on the hunt. How often would you say he comes for lunch here? When he's in the city, he usually stops by for at least a single meal. Every few days? I would say a few times every week, yeah. I don't know. To avoid him, of course. Of course, yeah. D you're thinking, there you go. Guess he uh, he knocked some sense into you, did he? And he's very proud of his joke. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Tara, Tara gives him a full throaty <laughs> laugh. <laughs> so proud of himself right now. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, I look back at my f my hand and my bruised knuckles, and I almost go into a fist, but I let it go. <laughs> okay. All right. So. At this point, you step out. You're going to fetch. You're going to get the ferry. Okay. Yeah. You get the before ferry. Before we before we do though, um, I'm so sorry. Just just one last thing. Um, Good. We should find Tharno before we go to Lerno and make our apologies. Apologies for what? Dag it. Please do not tell me that I need to explain our situation to you. He started the fight. It was I, a fair fight. There's nothing it to was apologize for. a fair for. fight. And I, I do not agree. I I think that we need to make amends with Thurnau, with Thurnau so that we... How, how amenable do you think Thurnau is going to be to us? I understand, but Thurnell's a busy man. He has so much on his plate. And with all this going on, I'm sure getting his frustrations out on Daggett must have relieved him a bit. So See, some next... sort of snot-nosed brat that goes sniveling to his father every time he gets in a barroom fight? 
Exactly. The next time we see him, we can... Are those dwarves not your kin, your blood? Why, why is it that I am more worried about their freedom than you are? And I'm she looks at you both say of that you. I'm not worried about their freedom. Well, it doesn't appear that you are. You are quite happy to stir up trouble for your own sake and not think about anything beyond what your fist might make contact with. Because I take the fight to their oppressors, I don't care about them? Do you think I am wrong? Of course. All right. Then I will go to Tharnow and I will apologize. You do not need Not on my behalf. I am not asking for your permission. I'll look at the rest of the group. When did she start following us anyways? Well, Tara does seem to know the politics here, and one of the reasons that I do not reside inside walls is because of these political discussions and decisions that have to be made. But I, I do trust that Tara has been here and knows what would be best for the goals of our group. I, after hearing Arenial say that, Daggett would pointedly look at Gilly. I thought we were going to go kill the wargs and deal with the huntsmen, and then we were going to talk to her now. Exactly. Fantastic point. Thank you, Gilly. I actually thought we would do it the other way around, which was to speak with Gornell. See, but then, I don't want to do that because I don't want to have to sign a contract with him because that's what that will bring about. Then we'll get locked in the Middle Island and what will we be able to do? Nothing. If we do it without Gurnow's uh, sanction, then he is quite capable of just saying that there is nothing he owes us for because he did not ask us to do anything. He is not a benevolent man. Then what we do for him, he doesn't know us. We'll take it into our own hands. That is an option I am willing to side with you on. If you want to take it in your hands, then let us do that. If we want to do it in a way that we can help the most people. And Master Floyd, it seemed to me earlier today that that was your purpose as well. Was to help the people of this town. But if the purpose is simply to get your kinfolk free, then I will absolutely help you with that. I did not think that was the purpose. How would we not be helping the people of the town by taking out the huntsmen, taking care of the wargs? That is helping the most people. I don't appreciate I this rhetoric. Do, I'm trying to manipulate disagree. us into your agenda. I do not disagree that it would be helpful. To people, I am telling. Then why you are you arguing? We, it's settled. I am saying that I will join you in whatever road you decide to take, but I need you to decide the road. And if we are going with Gornow's sanction, then we need to find Darnow and apologize to him first. I've decided we, a road. We are agreed. You can fall in line, or you can leave. Are we agreed? Well, there's not much of a choice. We do what we please and you must follow. All right. If you think this is the best way, then I will join you. I Let's not. sleep on it. Obviously, tensions are running too high today to make a, a concrete decision on this. We need to catch this ferry. We'll sleep on it and then we'll discuss and decide in the morning. Our fists and weapons are our strength. Contracts and legal bindings are not what we are good at. That is fine. Eric, you, you know why I will stand by your side. That is not the question. The question is how much can we get done with or without Gurnow's sanction in Tharbat? 
That is the question. And perhaps yeah. it is an uncomfortable one, but that is the question. We are free to leave, yes? We can yes. leave. We, okay. we can absolutely leave, but your dwarven friends who are unjustly pilloried will remain so. I just mean we can leave, fight and kill, and then return. Yes. We will have to be very discreet if that's the route we are taking. And we can make an apology and she'll kind of, I do agree, an apology goes a long way with those in power. But we can make an apology with action. Whatever you think is best. Turn to the fairy master. That's how you heard all this. Don't tell Gurn now or any of his folks. He's like, I was wondering if y'all wanted to get on the ferry. The sun's nearly down. It's going to be dark when we're halfway across the river. I didn't mean to pry. Yes, okay. we'd like to cross. Oh, Lord. I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, imagine you're all going to be paying five, ten times the normal rate to keep my silence about all this. Is that right? Is that a fair estimation? We'll go with five. Nope. I glower at Tara. <laughs> <laughs> she glowers right back. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you get onto this ferry. And he's not wrong, as it is getting dark. And you, you kind of get on. So just to sort of, you guys have to kind of go around the middle aisle. And so you start kind of going a little bit around and around. And you can see the toil of folks uh, on the middle aisle. You can see plumes of smoke from forges. Uh, you hear the sounds of people working, shouting one another. You see they're kind of all of the, the different uh, the different shops and the different work, you know, workshops, I should say, are kind of almost kind of on top of each other. Like they're fighting for room on the island. Like they're, fr- like they're almost going to get pushed off into the ocean or excuse me, into the river. I would say anybody, uh, let's see, I'll give it to Gilly. Anyone else have keen eyes? Mm-hmm. Gilly, no. roll, in a, roll an awareness test. Um, it's going to be ill-favored, uh, but your keen eyes, you can tap into if you like. Those of you that are on the ferry, as you're watching you know, this here and there, you feel kind of this sort of sort of current that's gently kind of kind of trying to sweep you around this sort of central island here, sometimes kind of pulling you in. He's the guy who's doing the ferry. He's kind of whistling here and there, and he's sort of using this big pole to kind of push. It's very slow moving. Uh, and he, he says, I yield, or uh, I'll snap into night, they all. Don't know what's got them all spooked. And when you look over the side, you can just see all these different shadows and things of fish or eat with something moving around in the river. Ooh. How'd you do, Gilly? Uh, I got an extraordinary success. Jeez, nice. extraordinary success. Yeah, I got a seven on my, my D12, but I got the sixes, so. Gilly, I don't know what it is exactly. The sun sets in the west. You're kind of looking off. You're you know, uh. sitting on one side. Maybe you're, maybe you're thinking back through the stuff that you read when you were in the library. Mm-hmm. As you're looking kind of northeasternly, up the, you know, up the river there away from the few lights that are now starting to pop up on both sides of the river. But as you're looking North, you're kind of looking past it. So the lights kind of all behind you at this point, the sun, the light of the red palace where all of the, the candles are starting to become lit various torches and lanterns that are popping up here and there. Even you can even hear the sound of like the, the, the fairy master kind of messing around with this little pole lantern he's got. But you see a ways off. So you guys kind of start to squint a little bit. If only Sorendir was here with his elvish eyes. Mm. You think you see a very faint blue-green glow on the water. Far in the distance. Maybe a mile, maybe more. But like your eyes 
or just everything's so dark and it's just suddenly this one little light that just sort of flickers for a moment. And you're the only one who is going to see this. No one else is going to get that. Okay. So you do with it as you please. Did did you did you see that? You what? What? It's the the blue the blue green flames again. Uh, fairy master. Uh, what what is down that way? Oh, uh, to the north there, well, it's more river for a bit. Uh, if you head even further, you, uh, kind of rebut the, uh, the swan fleet, the marshes over there. And then it kind of keeps just heading in further and further. Yeah. Do we, um, meta question, did, uh, Terry or Gilly, um, find out from Floyd or the librarian about Saruman in the north? Like that map? About what exactly? I'm sorry. But, wasn't there a map that Floyd had found that there's an old wizard tower? To, there's oh, a wizard I, tower I was to referring north? to Isengard. He, she was just she was just sort of lore dropping. Uh, sure, that's sure. To the south. But, but that's uh, that's way to the, to the south. Yeah. So, but is Gondor also to the south? Then? Yeah, Gondor and Rohan. Okay. Gondor is the southern kingdom. Arnor is the northern. Right. Rohan as right. well as to the south. In the east. Yeah. So where we are, Gondor is to the south, and this wizard tower that she mentioned is also to the south. Yeah, here I'll, I'll bring you over to the to the area door map so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay. So uh, okay. just to sort of uh, kind of show folks here, so you guys are where this uh, this white token is. That's Tharbad. Okay. Uh, and if you kind of like scroll on out a bit, uh, you can notice that this river, Got it. The, the Gray Flood, is southwest northeast the road the north south road goes through dunland there and then you can mm. see kind of at the far south edge of the map there's isengard which you would have to kind of go around a loop of the misty mountains at the right. bottom you can even see rohan uh she uh, i will say i was mentioning it not so much for you know i was mentioning it just because sort of making the reference to that uh, she was kind of flexing her knowledge got so it got it for got it. the river uh, that you guys are. I was on. just putting together the blue green light <laughs> with some of that lore drop. So the river that you guys are on, the Gray Flood, kind of continues northward. The Swan Fleet there is like this marsh, marshy area where there's all these different tributaries and stuff that kind of connects to the Glanduin, which is another river that heads east. But then it kind of continues to go northeast, uh, actually towards the Angle, which is where you would have. Uh, at some point spent some time, I would imagine, in the a ranger outpost there, uh, Terra. So kind of up uh, a little further to the northeast is probably where you would have spent more time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And so looking at this, um, which is the direction where Gilly just saw the lights? Northeast, upwards. Okay. Now, when, when, she, points it, when she points out in the direction she mentions it, uh, you can't see it. Uh, Gilly, you see right. it flicker every now and then and on almost like fireflies, right? Just flickering mm -hmm. on, flickering off. Uh, you're not sure if it's just like going behind something or if someone's standing in front of it or if it's hooded, but you see it periodically flickering on and off uh, as the fairy master kind of struggles to get his own lantern off and he's also struggling to the, to the sludge and you see like little up, you know, like, like this little kind of churn in the water uh, where the, the fish and the eel and everything's kind of getting a little anxious in the water here and there. But it's a ways up. It's a ways up there. Uh, it's outside. It would be well outside the um, the city, the city district area. It would be further than that. If you didn't have keen eyes, I wouldn't even have given you the roll. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With Gilly looking for ghosts down the river or up the river, uh, I think Daggett would start telling her the story, the full story of what happened the night before. Uh, how he saw the ghost, uh, and she spoke to him asking why he was there. He said he heard a scream, then th the warg attacked. Uh, he killed the warg, and then the ghost just disappeared as it walked away. Fascinating. Uh, what kind of armor was she wearing? I And then, and then as she asks you this, she also immediately turns to Arrhenio. Do you think the huntsman has landed? I, I'm it's, I'm I am almost certain it's we've seen that that before. Yes. Nowhere near here. I 
and then I, I, I learned today, um, and she starts flipping through her notes that she's taken. Um, you know, we discovered about those weapons that we found when we found, and she kind of just stops talking about it, but she like flicks her eyes to Floyd. Uh, and then she's like, but, uh, it's from, you know, a, a Southern, a Southern peoples and, uh, uh, and she just, she's just rattling off these facts just just quickly with excitement as she's also going through I, I, and it has to be related it, it it all has to come together at some point this is this is important this is this is bigger than just helping Thorbrum and Devi this, this is a problem and uh Yes, and Iridial is just sort of speechless because there's just so, there's always so much going on. There's always, you know, a person to help, but there's always kind of the broader weight of everything else that's, that's, that's going on. Your, 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 your notebook and your, you've, you know, you and Tara both know so much about the world and you're putting all of these things together. And sometimes we just need to know which fight is next. Don't think so harshly of yourself. You've been everywhere I've been. She just sort of thinks about that for a second. I could use a rest. Night is young. We can investigate this flicker you speak of. This is this is a great opportunity. Or that, sure. The mutton was was good. That'll carry along, and everybody will look back to Daggett and Tara. Tara is definitely very like sullenly sitting and like staring at Daggett. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were we talking about? I I told my ghost story, and I she started going on this history of weapons. I I, I didn't catch much of it. You're going to wet your blade with blood again. Okay. We're fighting tonight? Potentially. I I believe we saw, I think I saw the huntsman on the river. Point me at him. Let's go. Okay, so you point. No one else can see it. Uh, it's still too far away. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you are on this ferry going to the north side. I jump side. off the ferry, start swimming. Uh, Forest Gump style. <laughs> The current Please pushes no. him the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts floating <laughs> and floating down to London. Wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I was kind of mad at you, but we can still be friends. You can have to do that. Uh, so how do you want Forget to so take off wanted, my chain mail? <laughs> you just sink to the bottom. <laughs> he drowns just like that. <laughs> All right. So. So you want to investigate this thing. Okay, how do you want to do that? You're on a ferry. You're in the process of moving around the middle island. You're kind of weaving out and around the various chunks of the bridge that are you know, in shambles, a couple of the pedestals sticking in the water. How do you want to go about doing it? Do you want to land and then travel on foot? Um, I'll ask him, is this the last ferry? Yeah. It is, yes. Until morning. Can you? Can this go up the river? Can it go up the river? It can go wherever I'll, I'll send it to go. Sure. Could you take us a bit north then? Good. Uh, it's a ferry, sir. I go from one side of the river to the other. It's sort of my uh, job. Not, not for your job, but as a request, a favor. We'll pay you, um, of course. I'll beg your pardon, but uh, I don't think Master Gurna would think too well if he heard that uh, one of his... Most reliable ferry masters uh, didn't return to the North Bank as uh, he's meant to, according to the schedule. Uh, I believe uh, I could be significantly fined for such an endeavor. Oh. Even if you're off the job? Well, or after hours? The ferry is technically Master Gurnow's property. I'm merely operator. Uh, I understand, I understand. Like I said, he would probably tax me quite significantly 
to the point where my earnings would be, well, I, terribly hurt. I hear you. So I'll sort of bring out a chest. It's filled with a couple of coins, a little bit of... Where do you carry a chest? You just reach into your back pocket <laughs> and yeah, pull out a freaking treasure chest? Oh, my God. <laughs> just, okay. a, just a little, little chest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will tell you what, Floyd. Uh, and, and, and the rest of you can assist if this makes sense, but he is making a bribe. This is like a bribe thing. Floyd, you can make a persuade. Uh, I'll give you one bonus die if you would like. Uh uh, for for or not, if you would like, because you have specifically suggested you're going to give her her money. If anybody else wants to add something in terms of the bribery here, uh, you're welcome to do that as well, and possibly get additional dice. Because I'm going to want to see if you convince them. This isn't exactly what you offered, but I want to ask anyways. Um, would I be able to use my broken spells on his behalf to activate my runes to give him the bonus die for the persuade at the cost of one hope? Uh, Ooh. sure. Uh, assuming that you are helping your dwarven friend in a negotiation, I would imagine. Yeah. So yeah, sure. That can, that can happen. Okay. Right. Okay. So one, so that's two bonus die, one for your, your, your pot of treasure, your massive, you know, wallet of treasure, your George Costanza wallet of treasure. <laughs> <laughs> <don't get> <laughs> Why trade? Did you get that Radio? reference? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, goodness. I got a reference. Oh, I mean, you got it, Stephen, but the rest of them ain't good. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Do you see? <laughs> oh, well, he's sciatica. Uh, is always acting up. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Arinio. Arinio was doing? going to make the suggestion that, like, how, how long does it take to get from the south side to the north side? Uh, it's not too long, you know, maybe half an hour. It's like you're you're literally going across a long river with a pole and then around a middle a middle island. Oh, so how much longer way. from where we are now would it take to get to the north shore? Uh, from where you're at to where you're going, you're probably midway there. We'll say about halfway there. Okay. Um, Arinio was just going to say that you know we could we could land at the appointed time and then we could leave. So you can still meet your timetable. And then we could pay for your time after you have landed. Oh, so that's awesome. our contribution. Just trying to. I suppose that's true. However, as I said, the ferry is Master Gurnow's property by all technicality of the law. So I would still be absconding with his property, which would probably have a very significant fine on top of that as well. I work very closely in the Red Palace with Master Kurnow, and I will vouch for the integrity and honor of your work if you were to come with us after you meet the scheduled landing. When you say vouch for my integrity in... She's saying she can muddy the fined. papers. I mean, I will, make, I will do what I can, but you don't get fined. And you are able to hmm. keep as much of what my friends are willing to give you now. Okay. You can get another bonus die from Tara. There you go. He's uh this guy is a transactional man. Sure. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh so you can roll. So you're getting you're rolling your, your normal check with three bonus die, one from the, the treasure, one from Daggett, one from Terra. Got it. Rolling a total of four here, then. Okay. The better you do, the worse this is going to cost. The the less this is going to cost you. It's just a success out of all those dice. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. So you're going to eventually have to, in total, you're going to have to give up. <laughs> you're going to have to give up seven treasure. Uh, now you can divvy this okay. up amongst people. That's fine. Uh, but he, you're going to want to give over seven treasure. If you don't actually have seven treasure over, then you're going to have to reduce your your score. Not very liquid right now. <laughs> 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 um, do I? What do I have? Where my sheet is treasure? I can cover it all. I'll just you're bottom. probably pretty poor, actually, because you are I'm a ranger. Pretty poor. <laughs> Rangers. Yeah. 
don't yeah. have a lot of. Yeah. Floyd I, is very I, rich as a treasure hunter, sure. so he oh, could probably. Oh, then fuck you! You can do it. Give the one to say. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> guys my God. I really <laughs> don't have any treasure on me. I just have like my bank treasure. I don't have any load. Right. Well, bank treasure works. We're we're we're, we're making that. No, like, no, bank treasure doesn't no, work. I don't know the what liquidity of it. That's the coins that you're like you're dropping coins for mutton and ale. Where's that coming from? Dang it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so painful here. The stone treasure. This little okay. lock chest. All right. He looks to you all and he's like, "Well, I suppose we've got ourselves a, uh, an arrangement here. Well, well, point me which way are we headed." Uh, and Gilly will start directing him. All right. North it is. And he starts, here we go. And he starts whistling this like kind of creepy dirge. And you just see as on the side of the raft, as you guys are starting to float northward up the river, you see the ruins of Tharbad beginning to fade as you pass them. You see in the water around the raft, it's kind of like, there's this like foam that's beginning to form as there's little schools of fish and eels that are just kind of thrashing around as you head towards the flicker of this blue green lantern and possibly the huntsman. And I think we're going to go ahead and end there for this evening and we'll pick up on that next time. All Yay. right. Oh, that Very was nice. great. Gracious. You're all going to die so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. So great. Oh goodness. All right. Uh so yeah, if you just figure out how you want to divvy the treasure up is fine. I don't care. Uh all right. Very nice. So yeah, we'll be back uh next week with more and we'll figure out where this goes. Very excited to see uh, what happens. Very excited. Uh let's do some closing plugs. Uh Maitre, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me, and Steven, thanks for letting me yell at you a little. <laughs> so, I yelled at you first, to be fair. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, I'm glad we yelled at each other. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, thank you, first of all. Um, uh, you can find me on, uh, YouTube if you want. I make, uh, multi- system or system agnostic videos once a month if you need someone to tell you how great your gming is i just put out a gm affirmations video for april Fool's Day, um and it's parody but not really because we're all suffering from horrible imposter syndrome uh but uh that's that's me um thank you for having me fantastic we're so glad to have you. Uh, I enjoy anyone who's going to come on a show and yell at Steven. So I, I, I'm, <laughs> that's a I definitely feature. deserved it this episode. <laughs> I got to beat Steven up in a bar brawl. It was very great. <laughs> and uh, then I yelled at him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So next yeah, up for us on the channel, Monday, we've got a special episode of Holler as Tracy Sizemore, one of the creators of Holler, uh, of, of uh, a Savage World fame, uh, is going to be uh, guest GMing for two or three sessions of Holler. Uh, She's going to be running a, um, a kind of a special uh, special scenario as an interlude to our, our plot point campaign. Uh, so come hang out uh, and, uh, and, and see where that goes and see what Cletus and Double D uh, do to her sanity. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday, Stephen, what do we got going on? Playing some more Forbidden Lands. Uh, the theme of that game is that the party decides they're going to go somewhere and then they don't go there. Uh, so this, the head of my notes has been like notes for this city, cross it out. Notes for that city, cross <laughs> that out. Notes for I don't know what. Uh, so we're doing I Don't Know What next week, uh, and it awesome. will be fantastic because we have a great crew. Uh, Jeff will be there. Melissa will be there. Aaron and Kipser. Uh, lots of fun. Yeah, it is a great deal of fun. We're having so much fun. I, I have been greatly enjoying it. Uh, I really like how I am both I'm both David Hasselhoff and a necromancer now at the same time. <laughs> it's pretty great. He's just in a rat. So it's pretty great. Uh, Friday next week, then will be our next stream afterwards. Uh, we are back to Blade Runner, uh, as we are continuing our memories of fire campaign. Uh, and then Saturday we'll be back for more one ring. Obviously, please go check the YouTube channel, uh, adventures in lollygagging. We've got all sorts of games up there. If you're a free league fan, if you're a one ring fan, we have other videos. We have all 
51 more episodes that we've done of this show if you're just catching us recently. Uh, and we play a lot of freely games as well and other things. Uh, Conan from Modifius, Call of Cthulhu with Horror on the Orient Express. You can see the same crew uh, back around wintertime. We did a fun little Regency Cthulhu interlude that we're still yearning for. Uh, so go check that as well. Uh, so thank you to everyone who hung out tonight. Thank you for the bits. Uh, thank you for the subs. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. We so much, we so much love your support. Uh, we're going to go ahead and raid uh, our friends at the at uh, Boys from the Baltic Star. They're playing uh, Orbital Blues, which is a, uh, a favorite of this channel. We love that game. So go watch them. Very It'll be a lot of fun. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.